Andre Woodson and the catwalk. The Kentucky quarterback, his reputation is reaching mythical status in this state. And inside Commonwealth Stadium, what might be a record crowd has gathered to welcome the defending national champion, Florida Gators, to town. But first, a welcome for the captains, Andre Woodson, Steve Johnson. They lead the Wildcat team onto the field. A thrilling triple overtime victory last week against the top-ranked LSU Tigers. And now the Wildcats take the field. their last eight games in Lexington. And victories this year against Louisville at Arkansas. They lost to South Carolina, but they defeated LSU in a thrilling encounter last Saturday. seniors right now we've been through the ups and the downs um, but knew when we first got here that we could turn this program around uh, we have confidence in one another and, and right now everything's just paying off we have a lot of guys that believe and a lot of guys with heart determination and the will to win uh, this game is huge it's very important to us to stay in the sec title hunt and uh we're gonna go out there and play with everything we have we take every game with an equal amount of importance but this is a big one Every single time I step on the field, I just try to show confidence in my eyes because the guys respond very well to that. It's your job to go out there and lead the guys every day, every snap, every play. Everybody can see ice water in your veins and someone who's going to go out there and play with all their heart. I'm just happy to be on a team like this, you know, with so much talent around, you know, on offense and defense from special teams and everything. So uh, that's just the dream come true to be around a group of guys like this. SEC on CBS. As we mentioned, what is expected to be a record crowd, and they uh, respond lustily with boos to the appearance moments ago of the Florida Gators, the defending national champions. We join the SEC in celebrating 75 years of football, and this afternoon, a glamorous matchup. The Florida Gators, having lost their last two, come into town to take on the Kentucky Wildcats, who were 6-1. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist, along with Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson. These are wondrous days to be a Wildcat fan. After serving as an SEC doormat for decades, they're having a miraculous season. With those victories we just mentioned, none more significant than that triple overtime win last week. And today, a game of great significance in the SEC East Division. Tennessee is losing down at Alabama. South Carolina has lost to Vanderbilt, and that is huge news for these Kentucky Wildcats. Their one loss was to South Carolina. Gary, our second week here, and we've heard this repeated over and over. The seniors on this team had gone through dreadful years, and now they're enjoying the fruits of their perseverance. They sure are, Vern. You know, I mean, in the last 10 days, Kentucky has learned that they can compete, and then last week against LSU, they learned they can win against the big boys. But it's the four guys that stayed that I think is the story. I'm calling them Brooks's bunch. 
Woodyard, Woodson, Raphael Little, who will not play today, and Burton, their fine wide receiver. Those guys came here when it was just a dream. They stayed, they persevered, and now they're spearheading this team that could make a run of the national championship. Well, we've got a couple of quarterbacks of whom you may have heard. This guy named Tebow for Florida and Andre Woodson for Kentucky. I believe the winning team's quarterback will be the front runner for the Heisman, and they do so much for their teams, but they're so different in what they provide for their football teams. They're really opposites. Woodson and Tebow, you know, they're the face of the teams, all right, but one's a pocket passer, one's a tough runner, a physical guy, one's the emotional leader, other is cool, calm, collected. They're both, however, winners, and that's what they provide. They're both winners. Experience SEC College Football on CBS, brought to you in high definition by Sony. Well, for the second consecutive week, we are enjoying spectacular weather. Temperature of 70 degrees, a slight wind, and severe clear, the forecast. Well, if you are a Kentucky fan, you're aware that they have not defeated Florida in the past 20 encounters. The last Kentucky win was here in 1986. Florida won the toss and they have elected to receive. The small amount of wind is going into their faces. Here's the uh, kick by Tim Maste. It heads to the right side. Brandon James keeps it inbounds and heads right. Gets a couple of blocks. Watch out. He can go. And he does out to the 36 yard line. Well, these are, as we said, heady days in Kentucky. For more on that, let's check in with Tracy Wolfson. Thanks, guys. National recognition and constant media attention is something these Kentucky players have never had to deal with. That is until now. Head coach Rich Brooks told us his biggest challenge this week was making sure his players remain focused while they were still receiving pats on the back. He said, look, this is all good. We'll have plenty of time to enjoy it all later. We'll put it away for now. We have a chance to do something that's never been done around here, but we need to stay focused. Guys, we're about to find out how much all this distraction has had effect on this team. First down and 10, Tebow out of the spread, hands it to Harvin, he starts right, cuts back left. Harvin opens in the backfield, the wide receiver, and the lineups are presented by Applebee's. The sophomore, Tim Tebow, 1,455 yards, 13 touchdowns and three interceptions, and a gaudy 500 yards. Up front, Watkins, Tart, Miller, Pouncey, and Carlton Metter. Caldwell is back in the lineup, Murphy, Harvin, Keaston Moore, and Ingram join him. Second down and eight, Keaston Moore gets the handoff, bounces to the outside, and loses a yard. Braxton Kelly, number 56, one of the heroes of last week's win with the tackle. Defensively for the Wildcats, under coordinators Steve Brown, Jarman Peters Pryor, and Lewis up front. Kelly, we just mentioned, had the key stop on fourth down. Woodyard is the leading tackler in the SEC. And in the secondary, it'll be Adams, McClinton, missed last week, Cobb, and maybe the best of the bunch, Trevard Lindley. Harvin again in the backfield. Comes left. On third down, here's Tebow. Incomplete. Fourth down, three and out. That was intended for Andre Caldwell. Part of the strategy that Kentucky's going to use is to drop a defensive tackle. Watch right here, middle of your screen, it's going to be Corey Peters, number 91, takes the block, backs up right into the throwing lane, and that caused Tebow to throw that ball a little off target. That brings on Chaz Henry, and Demario Ford is deep. Here's a note. Florida has not had a punt returned for a single yard. Not a single punt. There's a fair catch. So that record remains intact. They are the only school in Division I who has not allowed a punt return yard this year. That's a 40-yard punt. And the Wildcats of Kentucky will welcome the senior Andre Woodson onto the field. Had a wonderful game last week. 64 percent, 1,700 yards, 21 touchdowns. He did throw two picks last week to run his uh, number to four up front. These guys really performed well against LSU. 
And you've got Burton, Dixon, Connor, Tammy, the tight end, and Steve Johnson, who caught the winning pass last week. First looky, down and ten. Looky here, empty first play. That's Florida's usual formation. Yes, it is. Tony Dixon, the running back, is put wide right. Here's the pass to the left side. Vicky Lyons. The junior who opens as a uh, slot receiver for the second week. They go with three wideouts. Here's Harvey, Estepinen, McMillan, and Cunningham. The linebackers for the Gators, Jones, Spikes, and Doe. And the secondary, Pierre-Louis, Wright, Joyner, and Joe Hayden. Two freshmen in that secondary. There's the handoff left side. It goes to Tony Dixon. And that will leave uh, the Wildcats looking at third and short. I think the strategy here for Kentucky to offset the speed of the front seven for Florida will be to utilize a lot of quick screens. Kentucky's a screen team, but last week they did not feature it against LSU. I think they'll come back to that screen game early. Third and one. Tony Dixon is the only running back. Here's the audible. Rich Brooks estimated that the Woodson changed place 50% of the time last week. Right side, Dixon, first down to the 40. Out of bounds at the 42-yard line. 11-yard gain on third and one. What he saw here was Florida going to an eight-man front with the corner creeping in. So he ran the power play away from that corner creep and he had the right play again dialed up by the quarterback now Connor comes in at fullback he is uh, to the left side there's the quick flip and that's a nice defensive play Wandy Pierre Louis reached his left hand in and knocked the ball away you mentioned that Andre audibled about 50 percent of the time last week some of those were the help of the coach but most of them talking to the coaches for Kentucky was on his own, including the game winner was an audible that Andre dialed up himself. Second down and 10, two wide left. Keenan Burton had a tough game last week. He's wide right. There's a little flip out to Dixon. No blocking help, and he's uh, able to get out of bounds with a gain of about one. Tony Dixon, his 10th catch of the season. Again, Raphael Little, who was the leading ground gainer for this team, out for the second week in a row, a thigh bruise that he suffered against Arkansas in the win on the road. So Little will not go. We'll see three running backs today. Dixon will be the first. Derek Locke, a true freshman, one of the heroes of the win last week, will come in, as will Alfonso Smith, a sophomore. Third and eight. Blitz coming from Brandon Spikes. Perfect, Dickey Lyons. They picked up the middle linebacker and gave Woodson time to find Lyons. That's a gain of 16. Dickey Lyons is quickly becoming the Wes Welker of this offense. He's going to be in the slot and come across right here. Great protection up front. Florida actually brings an extra player. They're playing a zone blitz, but look at Dickey Ryan's run right by it. He's deceptively fast. And that's a first down 10 inside Gator country at the 40. Dixon again, the only setback. Here's the handoff to Dixon. Little adjustment at the line. And he gets to the 35-yard line. Well, on the Florida sideline in his third year, Urban Meyer, 43 years of age, his record after a week open, either the beginning game of the season, a bowl week, or an open week, his record as a head coach is 22 and 2. Not bad. And of course, Florida had an open week after their loss two weeks ago at LSU. Second down, Woodson looks back toward the sideline. Randy Sanders, the head, uh, the uh, quarterback coach, is the man with whom he's communicating. Woodson. Inside, caught. That'll uh, leave a third down. Rich Brooks in his fifth year here, 66 years of age. Uh, enormous pressure to let him go right. last year, even, when they lost to LSU 49-0. But uh, 
they turned the, the ship around. Mitch Barnhart elected to keep Rich Brooks, and my goodness, the dividends have been great. It was a courageous decision by Mitch Barnhart, and has paid off for this program. Third down, second, third down in this drive. Here's Woodson with the change again, looks out. Now Keenan Burton looks over at Randy Sanders. Joker Phillips, the coordinator's upstairs. Nice block, they go deep right side. Lions is there, touchdown Wildcats. Junior from New Orleans. His father was an All-American here. Had his jersey retired. Dickie Lyons. Wide open right side. Now Lonis Sieber is on for the extra point. Maste will hold. The kick is up. Good. Pump and run. Dickie Lyons, who's quicker than Jack Rickerson and maybe just as fast. Beats him on the line of scrimmage. He won in the first three yards of that route. Kentucky showed Florida the full arsenal. Screens to long passes. Seven points. Dickey Lyons Jr. fourth touchdown catch of the year. Little things last week, Gary Danielson. Well, you know, when you do all the good formations and you got good players and the bounces start to go your way you know you're going to get it a field goal kicker that it struggle makes two of them and then a pass and downfield you don't take a playoff Dickie Lyons who just caught the touchdown pass how about a freshman running back coming across to make a key block if you're going to beat LSU you're going to have to do a lot of big things and little things well it's being regarded as the most significant victory at home in the history of football here at Kentucky and on that drive, Andre Woodson, 5 of 6 for 61 yards. And Rich Brooks told his team, Kentucky fans will talk about that game forever. You've got to forget it today. Nice little trifecta we've got going here, this little round robin, as LSU Tim Maste kicks off. And he has boomed him this year. That's his 15th touchback despite the new rule that forces teams in college football now to kick off from the 30-yard line. So Maste sends it deep. And Florida three and out on its first possession. They tried to establish their running attack. The problem with the Florida running attack is the tailback is only running the ball about 36% of the time, about a third of the time, which is the lowest in the nation. Uh, that guy might be a reason for it, but it still allows the defense to zero in on the quarterback. Empty backfield, that's Harvin. Now he joins Tebow. Here's the option, and Tebow keeps it, breaks the first contact. Oh, yeah, you're, yeah. he might be responsible Jeez. for that. Well. I was down on the field before the game. They're out there in those stretchy shirts, you know, and a guy looked like Hercule. I gotta give me one of those shirts. I think it's the shirt. You think so? I think it's the shirt, I tell you. He's a 400 pound bench presser. I know Florida fans know this, but regular followers of quarterbacks in football should not believe any of that. 400 pound bench presser. Well, look at the uh, rush yards for the season. That was prior to the last run, more than 26 other quarterbacks in the conference combined. And uh, let's go back to New York for this Liberty Mutual update. Here's Tim Brando. All right, Vernon, Gary, Oklahoma, one of those one-loss teams with a crap, gets the scare. E.J. Wolf picks off this Brett Meyer pass. Now, they rule this a touchback, although you can see he stepped out. They put the ball at the 20. Oklahoma did get a field goal out of it. They lead by 10, 17-7. Vernon. All right, Tim, 7-0 here. It's second down. As Tim Tebow again goes out of the spread. Eric Rutledge, the fullback, is in. They fake the handoff to Harvin. Go left. Nice job by Trevor Lindley out on the corner. Lindley having an outstanding year in this, his sophomore season. 
Yeah, he has been the steady guy that Steve Brown, Rich Brooks, the deep, you know, head coach and defensive coordinator, can depend upon. He comes up and gives you just about what you need every game. There's no dips, there's no peaks, there's no valleys. He's a sophomore eligibility-wise, but he's very experienced. He sat out a year, he redshirted a year, he's been here three and a half years. Only played three games his senior season at Hiram, Georgia, because of a kneecap injury. Third down and short. Here's Tebow with a lot of down. Oh, now the pressure comes and Ingram makes the catch out on the left side. That will be a Florida first down as Ashton Cobb makes the tackle, number 27. Well, we all know that first and second down has something to do with how well you can convert third down. On the last drive that Kentucky scored, they were three for three on third down. Florida is not running a lot of plays as an offense. They're averaging 64 per game. One of the reasons is their defense can't get off the field lately. And second is they've been having big plays, but no sustained drives like they're trying to do here. Lewis Murphy on first down breaks wide to the right. Here's Harbin again. They hand it off this time. He comes to the left. Keaston Moore with a block. And Harbin is spilled close to a first down at the 36-yard line. Percy Harbin averages almost 12 yards per touch running and receiving. Well, the key is the tackle right here gets a good block. That's how you get around the end. If you get a block by your tackle on a reach block, Jason Watkins does a nice job to get around the end. That type of running attack without Tebow, that's the key. Can Florida run the ball without Tebow? We know Tebow's going to get him. Can they give him something else? Murphy, Moore, and Ingram go wide right. Two men bottom of the screen, one of whom is Jared Faison. Here's the option play with Faison. Well, there's no option. Uh, Tebow didn't even uh, <laughs> glance at it. And as we look at uh, second down, let's go back once again to Tim Brenda. All right, Vern, number one in all the polls and the BCS standings. Importantly, Ohio State Todd Beckman here to Jake Ballard. 14-yard scoring play, 7 nothing. Ohio State. And Alabama really putting an old-fashioned whooping on Tennessee and the leaves begin to turn game there. Vern. Whoa. Most important thing now is Florida controls their own destiny to get back to the championship. Second down. Here's Tebow. Fakes it. Pulls it up. He'll keep it. Remember prior to the Tennessee game? Well, let's uh, check the standings first. Tennessee, you see it, and they get the loss now. That means Florida has a chance because they beat Tennessee in a tie in a deadlock. Florida would get their nod to go to the SEC championship. So without Tennessee losing in the East, Tennessee controlled their destiny. Obviously, Kentucky does. There's other teams, but Florida now controls their destiny again. Even though their two losses were in the West. Right. One to Auburn, one to LSU. First down and 10. Brandon James is in as a running back now. They took it out to him right side. He's got a block downfield and hauled down from behind by Braxton Kelly, number 56. Kelly with the key stop on fourth down in triple overtime last week. One of the factors for Tebow is because he scrambles, watch here how slow Kentucky comes off. I'm worried, I'm worried, I'm worried. See that? They're not getting that upfield rush that they used against LSU. Right now they're going, Coach said, don't let Tebow get out of the pocket. Kentucky's front four is going about 60% uh, off the line of scrimmage. Ninth play of the drive for Florida. They trail by seven. Basin. High school quarterback listed as a wide receiver, but used more as a running back. He's only got two catches this year, but that's his 10th run of the season. And it will be third down. Just amazing how this uh, this season is working its way yes. out. And, and uh, who expected Tennessee to get blown out no, by Alabama? No, no one. I mean, wow. Especially when you're, you're, you're you know, in have problems with players before the game and you get some kicks them off the team and you play like that third down and four Tebow juggled and caught 
That will be a first and goal as Lewis Murphy, number nine, makes the grab. If Braxton Kelly, middle linebacker, had a little better ball skills instead of going for the hit, he could have broke up this play. Braxton Kelly goes for the hit on the play. Ball pops up in the air. If he could have just kind of looked up and made the play, he could have stopped it. Ashton Cobb was there, but the middle linebacker needed to make the play. Gary was alluding to the suspensions of five players at Alabama announced just prior to their game with Tennessee. Violation of a textbook policy, and they were suspended. First down and goal. Here's Tebow, option left. Pitches. Andre Caldwell, gang tackle. He does get to the 10-yard line, but that's uh, a loss. May officially be no gain. And Kelly limps off. So Micah Johnson takes his place. One of the keys that Kentucky's using is number 29 right there, Eric Rutledge. When he's in the game, they're playing run and option. You can see that the Kentucky players are really flowing, and no matter how well you run it, you pitch it, you've got that many guys there, it's not gonna work. One of the keys, one of the tips, or you wanna say tells if you're a card player, is at 29 in the game, they're playing run. Second down, Easton Moore, number 33, goes in motion. Here's Tebow, pulls up, left-handed, lets it go, Ingram. Touchdown, Florida. Going to his right, pulling up, and fires it perfectly. Everybody that watches Kentucky foot, excuse me, Florida football knows that Cornelius Ingram is one of the key players that has been a tough matchup for everyone in this league. Started at the end of 2006, and when you watch football and you watch Florida football, you wonder why they don't throw it more to him. So the play is under review. It was a two-man rub to the outside. Two people rubbed to the outside. You see Tebow rolls right, sealed off inside, opens up, throws it nicely. And I wonder if they're seeing if he stepped out, obviously, is what they're thinking. That looks pretty clean. He had the ball in both hands when he got across. Replay official today is James Allison. The referee is Thomas Ritter. And uh, Ingram goes about 6'5 and has great reach, former obviously basketball player for the Gators. That was an easy rebound and touchdown. I think that's clearly a touchdown. Yeah, I can't imagine <laughs> what uh, what is in dispute. No. Really nice double pick to the outside the that time. The is confirmed. Touchdown. Impressive drive for the Gators. They were three and out on their first possession. Ingram caps this one, 12 plays. 80 yards. Tebow was four of four on the drive. Now Joey Eos is on to uh, attempt the point after. Tied at seven. Well, Florida needed an answer, and they got an answer with a great drive. Tebow to Ingram. Gators and Wildcats notched at seven. Seven seven Florida and Kentucky. Now it's time for the playbook presented by the Hartford. Well you're going to see the problems for Kentucky. There's Ingram. There's the guy that's covering him. Now watch what happens. The two receivers come down. Ingram out in the flat. It's a nice little pick play to the outside. Nobody doing anything wrong. Nice little easy rub off, good catch. Nice call play, well executed. Kentucky did not have an answer. They need to play a banjo on that, where the outside guy takes somebody, the in guy side takes somebody, and they don't just go man to man. Or they need to move up, get closer to them. <laughs> Joey Eos will kick off as Tebow four of four on the drive. And it's seven seven. Eos put on scholarship last summer. Quite a famous story in the Gainesville area. He uh, was told by Urban Meyer, if you make this field goal from 52 yards out, you got a full ride. He made it. Here's Keenan Burton, the senior. 
And he's banged down as he gets to the 23 yard line. The stop made by Brandon Hicks, number 40. Well, when we talked to Rich Brooks yesterday, he said it's going to be a shootout. We know they're going to put points on the board. It's going to be something like us scoring four or five touchdowns to win this game. He's right on pace. Well, matter of fact, almost the last thing he mentioned before he left the room was we may have to outscore yeah, them. Right. I mean, that seems right. logical, but you know what he means. Sure, it's it's two tough offenses to stop. First down and 10. Snap is back. Woodson pulls up, goes, he's got a man open, and Steve Johnson, I think he should have had that one. Maybe a little too high. Well, Kentucky has lost 20 succession, successive. That's a tough thing to say. Uh, they've got Mississippi State at home. They're doing fine historically against them. At Vanderbilt, at Georgia, haven't defeated them in 30 years. And Tennessee, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Second down. Woodson back. Four-man rush. He fires it out. Nice catch. Boy, that was a nifty catch by the fullback John Connor. The pass a little behind him and high. Uh, it's interesting. The scouting report on Connor is he's the better blocker. Brenner is the better receiver. You don't get a better reception this from the fullback. How about a one-hander behind you? To move the ball, <laughs> that's a fullback, ladies and gentlemen. Sophomore from Westchester, Ohio. Third down and two. Three wide. Marky Anderson threatened the blitz. Now comes back outside. Now he moves inside. He's coming. Woodson goes the opposite direction. Johnson has it. And while we've got a moment, let's go back to last weekend and take a look at Home Depot's tool for success. Well, that last play was one of the tools for success. A quick pass where you just get the ball in and out of your hands. They've also got the pocket pass that takes about three and a half seconds. The play action pass that Andre is so good at and the rollout. Those things combined have been a very effective weapon for this Kentucky offense. You'll see. We'll go back and look at the stats from LSU last week and see how they used it. Woodson off to a terrific start, seven of nine. Hands it off this time. This is Tony Dixon again. Quick opener. He found a huge hole, and he's out to the 30, uh, the 43-yard line. 11-yard gain. Great balance in this offense, and Woodson starts it because of what he does in the offense. Last week, you can see it. Three for six, eight for 18. They used all of the weapons, but the bottom line, zero sacks allowed. Those four weapons is what kept that LSU defensive line off Woodson. Dixon's one gives uh, Kentucky a first down. Here's Woodson back, great time. Right side for Johnson. He's got him. This Florida defensive secondary suspect, particularly at the corners. And they give up another big play here. If you watch here, Burton and Johnson, this guy's going to catch the ball, but Burton is just as open. When you throw the quick passes, all of a sudden you have the long passes. The top of the screen's open, the bottom of the screen's open, and you've got an NFL quarterback throwing the ball. Nice offense. 27-yard gain, handoff left side. Dixon. Derek Harvey hauls him down and makes contact. Dixon is able to slip it and pick up positive yardage. Andre Woodson was really relegated to a second string status in the spring a year ago behind Curtis Pulley, but then he captured the starting job and he's really matured. As a yeah, he has. It was a little bit of a message, a little bit of competition. Either way, he's reacted to it. Now, just one point, the guy who hasn't been involved so far, Tammy, the tight end, he will get involved very quickly. Play action. Woodson, all down. Andre Woodson. Derek Harvey leads this team in sacks and had that uh, unforgettable performance in the national championship game against Ohio State last year. 
And that is his sixth sack of the year. It was a really interesting call. I, I'm not sure if Woodson checked that or not. They had DeMario Ford on the field. So really they had three out of their four best receivers not on the field that time and they kept Tammy in. It's not a real good play formula for success. Third down and 11. Timeout. Timeout. Timeout with 150 remaining in the opening quarter. 7 7 here in Lexington. That's the word. <laughs> third down, 11. Kentucky, four for four on third downs so far. Only one of them was a lengthy one. That was third and eight. Play action. Woodson. Oh, boy. Woodson. That Jermaine hurt. Cunningham, yes. That could have hurt. That could have hurt Woodson. Cunningham had 17 tackles against LSU. Bent Woodson around on that play. I think Woodson knew they were faking the blitz and stayed with the play, but Cunningham, defensive end, is unblocked on the play. And to watch him get bent, his left ankle and knee, boy, that got twisted below him. And, you know, that's, uh, that's one of the guys that they can at least afford to lose, obviously, their starting quarterback. Longest field goal this year for Lona Sieber was 48 yards. If he makes this, it would equal that one. Here's the kick on the way, and it is... No good. So the back-to-back -back sacks yes. by Derek Harvey and Jermaine Cunningham, very significant. I didn't like either one of the two calls on second down and third. Third and long, a play-action naked boot. Second, a threat pass play, and it took a field goal position or a scoring chance for a touchdown to a long field goal try that was just a couple feet wide to the left. We're back in Lexington. Get complete coverage of all the day's action and watch an exclusive SEC college football highlight show tonight on CBSSports.com. Third possession now for the Florida Gators. They were three and out on their first 12-yard, 89-yard drive for the touchdown that tied this one up. Now they've got a first down at the 30-yard line. Tebow, they ride it on the dive play, and Keiston Moore, number 33, Picks up a couple, and uh, let's go down to Tracy, who's got some information on Tim Tebow. Yeah, guys, just something to keep an eye on. After the last drive, Tebow came off, walking up and down the sideline. Assistant trainers quickly looked at his hip. He did not make any mention of it to the head trainer, but it is something to keep an eye on. Also, cornerback 1B Pierre-Louis taken to the locker room with a shoulder injury. All right, Trace, thank you. Second down and six. Both quarterbacks nicked early. Tebow fakes the run, pulls up, goes deep. He's got Lewis Murphy down there. Stride for stride, caught. Touchdown, Gators. And they beat the best corner, Travard Lindley. A perfect pass. Last year, we saw that same connection, same play. Tebow fakes the run, pulls back, finds Murphy, who's got great speed. The most devastating play in the arsenal of the spread is a play-action pass play to yourself. A play-action pass play to Tebow, that is a rule buster for a defense. 66 yards. Joey Eos on to try the extra point. Gators lead 14 to 7. Watch how devastating a play. Florida actually pulls a guard on the play. Watch this. Right guard is going to pull. Tebow takes a step in. Play action pass to himself. The most devastating play in this offense. When you have a quarterback that can outnumber you with nobody in the backfield, and then you've got a 4-3 guy to the outside, puts it right on the money. Florida's offense has been more diverse. You can tell the bye week has paid off. For the Wildcats. 
Tim Tebow, 66 yards. Longest touchdown pass of his career. Lewis Murphy on the other end of it. Longest reception of his career. Alfonso Smith has gone deep now for Kentucky. And if Kentucky doesn't figure it out, it's going to be the longest day of the year for Kentucky fans. <laughs> Here's the kick, short, taken by Keenan Burton. And nice return out to the 37-yard line. Take another look, Gary, at the touchdown. Safeties read guards to tell them whether it's a run or pass. Watch the free safety, Marcus McClinton, right there. When the guard runs, just keep your eye on him. Watch what he, oh, I'm in, I'm out, I'm turning, still in the middle of the play. There goes the guy right down the middle of the field, Murphy. That's what a devastating play that is to safeties. And as a result of that uh, connection between Tebow and Murphy, Florida leads by seven, final play, first quarter. Woodson has four men out. Tony Dixon is the running back. They fired out Keenan Burton. Makes the catch and will be uh, close to the first down market. That is the offense right there, that little bubble screen offense that keeps that Florida pass rush off Woodson. That's a gain of nine yards, so it'll be second down and one when we return. That's the end of the first. The Gators score 14 unanswered. We'll return to Commonwealth Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. Andre Woodson having a splendid year, fifth year senior, 14-7 as we began the second quarter. Kentucky with Woodson as the signal caller. They have four wides, one running back. And Woodson again pointing out the defense. He hands it off quickly, left side on uh, second down and one. Well, Kentucky and Florida both in control of their own destiny. Earlier today, South Carolina loses at home to Vanderbilt and Tennessee gets whacked in Alabama. I don't know which one's more surprising, to tell you the truth, but you know what's happened in this game is the plays that LSU was not making last week, remember, underthrown balls, overthrown balls, drop passes, Florida's making them now. They're making the plays. That's what you have to do. Yards are available against Kentucky's defense, but can you make the play? Third down and one. They'll hand it off, and the off-tackle plunge left side. Tony Dixon appears to have gotten the first down. It's a, First down at 47. Excuse me, Gary. It's a two-fold drive here for Kentucky right now. They need to take some clock off the field. Their defense is a little bit gassed, and they obviously have to put points on the board, but they'd like to do it 11 yards at a time if they could. Three wide to the right. Florida employing a nickel defense, five defensive backs on, four men down, and two linebackers. Woodson, the handoff to Dixon. Does a good job of protecting the ball, and there's a, a fine game by Tony Dixon. Because of the alignment of all the wide receivers, the linebacker walks out of the box. That's the key, linebacker out of the box. You've got numbers inside, that allows the run. Without the right number of defensive backs in the game, when Kentucky goes four wide receivers, you're forcing Florida into zone defense, and right now Kentucky has the numbers they like in the run game. Dixon close enough to uh, dictate a, a measurement, so the chain comes out from the far side. It's good, first down. And Dixon gets a rest now, first time today. Again, Raphael Little, the leading ground gainer, the fifth-year senior, not playing because of a thigh bruise. And so on the field right now, Derek Locke, a true freshman from Hugo, Oklahoma, who carried 20 times for 64 yards in that triple overtime win last Saturday against LSU. Still no Tammy in this game. He's an important part of the offense. Especially without Little. 
Penny, lower part of the screen, where's number 18? Now, here's the change. They all look back at Randy Sanders, the quarterback coach. On first down, quick setup. Woodson, nobody open, throws it away. Now, Derek Locke came to Kentucky on a track scholarship. He was an outstanding sprinter and long jumper. This was his long jump. Well, you saw the end of it. And here is the sprint. He was timed in 10.6 seconds at Hugo, Oklahoma. Now, he is a track scholarship that is now on a football scholarship, but he was recruited by a lot of schools as a defensive back. What he held out for, and Derek was right, was to be a tailback. That's what Kentucky signed on, and that's why they've got Derek Locke. Second down and 10. Eric Scott snaps it back. They hand it to Locke. Locke goes right side. Great effort. Interesting when you asked him, Gary, about ball security yeah. yesterday. He hasn't fumbled a lot. He's been money with the ball. And I said, hey, have you been always in your career? Have you never been a fumbler? He said, oh, my. I fumbled seven, eight, nine times in high school. I decided to put two hands on the ball. Major Wright is going to put a hit on him. Does he protect it? Yes. Two hands on the ball and runs right through a big hit by Major Wright. Third and five. Hayden is late getting over to cover the slot receiver, Kenyon Burton. Here's the uh, audible again from Woodson. Here's a nice matchup down to the bottom of the screen. Lock comes left. Close for the first down at the 32-yard line. Yeah, this would be a decision for Rich Brooks. I don't think he made it. Saw the matchup right there. Tammy, a former wide receiver on Branded Spikes, an inside linebacker. Bounce out play right here. You watch him bounce out to the outside. Inside handoff, bounce out play. Good block to the inside by Gary Williams. And it will be a fourth down decision. Florida defense has had about enough of these fourth down makes. Are they going to get a stop? Remember in their loss at LSU two weeks ago, the Tigers were five for five. He got it. That's Locke, right side. At what point, if it happens, do you quit being a true freshman? Well, <laughs> uh, I think at about this point of the year, he's become so dependable now that Rich Brooks says, I'm going to get him in earlier in the game. That's a dependable football player. He doesn't fumble. He falls forward. He picks up blocks. I mean, he probably does it all but catch passes right now. First down and 10. He's the deep back in the eye this time. They play fake. Woodson goes right side. Rickerson is beat. Out of bounds. They had Jock Rickerson, and Steve Johnson caught it out of bounds. Well, going down the right sideline, play action pass. Quarterback's job is to keep that ball on the playing field. Johnson's open, catches it, right foot, left foot, left foot, right foot, his right foot came out. The question is, did he have his left foot down when he caught it? I think that might be reviewable. That ball seemed to be in his hand. If I was Kentucky, I'd slow snap it. Well, they, uh, they do snap it. Here's Woodson back, pressure's on, he pulls up, he's not a runner despite the fact that he scored from 12 yards out last week, and Brandon Spikes makes the tackle with Derek Harvey. Let's take another peek at this one. Right foot is in. Oh, he must have. Oh, his left foot comes down on the line, I guess. The, the right question there. was, was his left foot on the line? Yeah, clearly on the line. He got too excited on that one. Guy <laughs> wide open in the end zone. I thought he might have had a chance for it. <laughs> Third down and 10. Interesting, Tammy was wide open down the middle of the field, too, for an easy score. Florida's got uh, eight men up. Good protection, the pass behind Dickie Lyons. It'll be fourth down. And we have a moment. Let's go back to New York. Here's Tim Brander. All right, Vern, Steve Slayton of West Virginia is going to score his 43rd career rushing touchdown, a WVU, uh, WVU record as he goes in against Mississippi State. It's now 31-0 score, and Ohio State is rolling against Sparty, 17-0. Vern. 
one of the factors here as Kentucky's going to go for it, Vern, is it's a slightly into the wind. It would be a 46-yarder if they tried the field goal. And uh, Lona Sieber has missed one today from 48 with the win. So on fourth and nine, here's Woodson. Deep in the corner again, he's open. But Burton had to adjust the pass over his outside shoulder. Well, that's two of them by Andre Woodson that if he keeps in the football field, they're touchdowns. Right now, Tebow and Florida are making the throws. Woodson, on opportunity throws, is throwing it out of bounds. First thing you say on a deep ball, keep it in bounds. This one incomplete, however, and the ball goes over on down. Monday on CBS, the new hit comedy from the creator of Two and a Half Men takes on the birds and the bees. Check out the Big Bang Theory Monday at 8.30, 7.30 Central on CBS. Twice now, long drives, no points for Kentucky. Florida has the ball and a seven-point lead with 9.40 to go first half. Tebow. Drew Miller will snap it back. He keeps it. Does Tebow and a nice defensive job. Well, Tim Tebow under Urban Meyer, the other fine quarterback out of Utah, was Alex Smith. Yes, Urban came with the offense, but look at the difference that's been happening with Tebow compared to Alex Smith, who was the center of the Utah offense at quarterback. 46% of the rushes so far this year have been going through Tim Tebow. That is a huge number. 26% and Smith ran a lot for Utah. That's how this offense has got it tilted so far towards Tebow. Aaron Hernandez is in as an extra tight end. There's the play fake. Tebow rolling to his left. And he'll tuck it and run. It'll be third down and five. That's why Tim Tebow is making a run, even though as a sophomore you wouldn't think so. In two losses, you wouldn't think oh, he's making a run at the Heisman because he's so integral to this Florida offense. He's really doing it all. I mean, those yards right there, he really is the offense, whether he scrambles or runs or throws. I mean, he's got the ball all the time. Had a high on the ground of 166 yards that was at Ole Miss when late in the game he kept screaming give me the ball. Hey bet this is a big stop for Kentucky. Third down Keiston Moore is the running back. Percy Harvin starts in motion. Tebow under pressure they got him. Dominic Lewis number 20 was the first man there. Kentucky only brings three players on this one. They drop a tackle. Watch it. They line up four, but watch the tackle drop. One of them drops right in the middle that time. It was big 98, Myron Pryor, that dropped. So a three-man rush. It fooled Tebow. That defensive tackle was right in his throwing gate lane again. What a changeup by this Kentucky defense. Chaz Henry is on to punt. There's that note. He's punted once. It was a fair catch. Nice block on the rush. Here's Burton backing up. And for the first time this season, yards have been gained on a punt return against Florida. Well, couldn't go any better for Kentucky. They get a stop three and out. They get the ball on the 35-yard line after they've gone two drives with no points. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC will continue from Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington after this word from your local station. We're back in Lexington, Kentucky. Time now for the trivia question of the week. Sometimes he's tardy. In 2001, who replaced Urban Meyer as Notre Dame's wide receiver coach? That was the year Meyer got his first... Mm. Head coaching job at Bowling Green. I did games in 2001 at Notre Dame. They were called wide blockers back then. They didn't catch any passes. <laughs> <laughs> First down and 10. Tony Dixon back as the running back. He gets the carry and gets a couple of uh, yards. Offensive coordinator of the Kentucky Wildcats. He played here back in the 80s. Joker Phillips. He is leaning forward right there. That's Joker. Right there. Great shot of him. 
wide receiver coach uh, at South Carolina, along with Charlie Strong, who was the defensive coordinator there under Lou Holtz. Right side, Woodson has a man open. That's the tight end, Jacob Tammon. Well, finally. <laughs> Interesting thing about Joker Phillips. He took over the job in 2004 with one game remaining in the season. His first move as offensive coordinator was to move Jacob Tammy to wide receiver to tight end. That day against Tennessee, he caught five passes, 55 yards, and two touchdowns. He's gone on to be a first-team All-SEC tight end and a tough matchup for anybody in this conference. Tammy out of Danville, one of the three married players on this team. Here's Dixon. Well, they are moving against this Florida team. They've had two sustained drives where they came up empty. The only touchdown came on the opening drive of the game for the Wildcats. What's happening to Florida right now is if they don't put pressure on Andre Woodson, they're having a tough time stopping this offense. The problem is corners. Pierre-Louis is hurt. I mean, you've got secondary guys. Rickerson has been beat for a touchdown. Marky Anderson's been not healthy until this game. Charlie Strong does not have confidence in his secondary. First down after that catch by Jacob Tammy. That was the 100th catch of his career. Here's Dixon going right, and it'll set up a second down. We'll go back to our New York studios, and once again, here's Tim Brown. Vernon Gary, the Cal Golden Bears, looking to rebound after that clock mismanagement problem against Oregon State that shook up the BCS for the Pac-10. Nate Longshore back in, goes 39 yards to Deshaun Jackson. Cal has the lead on UCLA. Vern. All right, Tim, thank you. Second down and nine here. Cal is the perfect example of what I hate about the BCS. They lose one game with their out their starting quarterback, and they might not have a chance to play for the championship. Are you suggesting that there's yeah. things wrong with the BCS? Yeah, there is. And there's a running play that goes absolutely nowhere. Well, last Sunday night, the BCS standings reveal for the first time what catches your eye there. Well, what catches my eyes, there's a couple teams that don't belong up there because they already had lost. Let's Whoops. take those guys out of there. And it's kind of like dominoes. Everybody's going to shuffle up. But you know what happens this year is there's more teams involved than ever. I think you can take this thing all the way down to there to Auburn still being alive. Mm. And Kentucky rated in the BCS standings at number seven. First time in the school's history. Blitz spikes. They find Dickie Lyons. But he can't get much. A fumble. And that's a live ball. It's recovered by Florida's Jermaine Cunningham. Dickie Lyons felt he was down. That is a reviewable play. They let the play go, so it's reviewable of whether he was down. Quick screen to the wide receiver. Dickie Lyons gets hit. Boy, his elbow came down. I did not see if the ball popped out first. It looked to me it came out when his elbow hit. His knee's down. That ball's still in his hand. That no. should be reversed. That's got to be reviewed. Reviewed and reversed, I beg your pardon. Dickie Lyon's father was an All-American here, and he's now a private investigator. Don't need a private investigator on this one. I think it's pretty obvious. So it uh, is under review, Dickie Lyons. We talked to Dickie Lyons Jr. yesterday. He said, what is your dad doing now? He said he's Magnum P.I. That's right. Well, the interesting thing about Dickie, I mean, we've already seen him catch a pass. We visited with him. He's, you know, the ultra ego type guy. Ball was, ball was called a fumble, can be reversed. The officials are told to err in the side of a fumble because that can be reversed. If you call it as he's down and the ball actually was a fumble, it cannot be reversed. So it was called properly. It wasn't right, but at least the <laughs> official called it properly the way they're taught because it can be fixed by the upstairs referee. And again, James Allison is the replay official today. No matter what, it'll be third and long after if they get it back. Lions tackled by Dorian Monroe, the sophomore from Miami. And uh, word coming down from the replay booth right now. And I'm also sorry, I think that was a third down play. Yes. So it would be a fourth, fourth down, down decision. 
Dickie Lyons, one of those guys that was recruited here for a number of reasons. Maybe one, his dad was here, but what they said is once we got him on campus, he was more than advertised, and we were happy to have him quicker than people think. It's hit. Watch. Ball's pretty solid in his hand. Knee goes down, elbow goes down, and then it pops out. Boy, if I'm wrong on this one. Uh, I, re I really am surprised at the length of time. Yep. It's whether the ball is moving is probably what they're looking at, is whether the ball is moving. Would be about fourth and seven, fourth and eight. That would be the decision if they respot it. That might be one of the things they're looking at, Vern, is where to spot the ball. Well, the conversation or the consideration continues. Dickie Lyons, Jr. said he visited his grandmother who lived here when he was a junior in high school and uh, went to the camp and was offered a scholarship right away. And after that, there was uh, no decision as far as he was concerned. He came up from the New Orleans area. His dad played with the Saints after his collegiate career here. After review, the ruling on the field is reversed. Video evidence shows that the runner was down at the 36-yard line to be fourth down. Legitimate call. Yep. Kid is made by Dorian Monroe. Knee is down, elbow is down. I still say, now remember, the officials called it the way they're instructed. This way it can be corrected. Now the decision by Rich Brooks. It's fourth and nine officially. Recall that on their last possession, they passed up a 46-yard field goal. This time they will pass up a 53-yard field goal into the wind, and they go for it again on fourth and nine. Best matchup right here. Tammy on the linebacker. Three-man rush, zone blitz. Woodson right side has a man open. First down plus Steve Johnson. You said the most important thing, Vern, three-man rush. When you don't get pressure on Andre and you're just hoping that he misses him again, look at that matchup. Look at the cushion by Joe Hayden. He's already been beaten deep. That's about as easy as you can get on fourth down. Another fourth down conversion against this Florida defense. That was a gain of 24. The handoff to Dixon. And he is caught for a modest gain, if any, by Derek Harvey, number 91. Clock showing under four to go in the first half of play. This Kentucky team, they got the big help they needed when South Carolina was knocked off by Vandy. And Tennessee loses at Alabama, so both of these teams in control of their own destiny. Second down and 10. Florida with four down this time. That's Dixon in motion wide to the left. Woodson, straight drop back. Underneath pass, Dixon. Caught and dropped at the 12 by Brandon Spikes, number 51. Look at the plays. The game, the clock has been controlled by the Kentucky offense. They, a little bit by the defense, they gave up a big play for a touchdown. But look at that, 38 to 20. That's keeping this Florida offense off the field again. Remember, they're only averaging about 64 plays a game. Third and seven, Johnson goes wide right. Lions Jr.'s in the slot. Demario Ford is at the bottom of the screen. Third down. Woodson back, goes in the end zone. Was that ball tipped? Uh, no, was just a bad pass. Yeah, it was. Came out of his hand high again. That's about the third time that Woodson was either anticipating a throw or not. Now, we talked a little bit about his funny delivery. I'm giving up on this delivery. The guy throws too many good throws, but the elbow comes out. That looks perfect now as he lets it go, but it kind of just flies on him too high I don't know what he was expecting I don't know what uh, if the receivers crossed him up but he obviously wasn't throwing it to the spot he wanted that ball to go to or the receiver was not in the spot he thought it was going to. Lona Sieber missed one from 48 at the other end this one from 27. Kentucky needs to get something out of these uh, offensive possessions and they do as the sophomore from Knoxville Lona Sieber one for one, one for two today 
drilled a 43 yarder in uh, overtime. Well, they went for it on fourth and nine. Rich Brooks applauds the effort. That was a 24 yard gain. They get a field goal. 238 to go, 14 10. And uh, Maste getting ready to kick off for Kentucky. Real big point here. This is going to be slightly into the wind, so there should be a return by Florida here. Brandon James and Keiston Moore are the deep men. Kentucky with another double digit uh, drive in terms of number of plays. They've moved the ball almost at ease against Florida. But in the last three possessions, they've only come up with three points. Here is the kick, and Brandon James will return it from the one to the 25, to the 40, to the 50. Out of bounds, huge return by Florida's Brandon James. See, that's why I think if you're Kentucky, you got to really think about that strategy. Kicking into the wind, Kentucky just assumed they'd get a touchback the way those balls have gone, but not into the wind, and James takes it. He is a threat. We saw him do it against Tennessee, and now, you know, I, I thought maybe a squib or a pooch kick, give him the ball at the 35. Look what's happened here now. Constant decisions, decisions, decisions that these coach are making throughout this game that have ramifications. 61-yard return by Brandon James. Great field position now with 2.28 to go before the break. Tebow, that's Rutledge, the fullback. And here's that uh, handoff to Keiston Moore, left guard. Well, why will we've got a chance? Let's uh, invite the duck back and give you the answer to the trivia question. In 2001, who replaced Urban Meyer as Notre Dame wide receivers coach? He's up in the press box. Joker Phillips, how about that? Joker's going to be a head coach one of these days. Will he kind of take over here at Kentucky? Will Rich Brooks anoint Joker as the next head coach someday, way off in the future? Inquiring minds want to know. Well, the next wave of head coaches are our are, are coordinators now, and Joker is one of those guys. Second down and six. Here's Tebow. Goes left, has a man open. That's complete to Andre Caldwell. Caldwell out for four games. The best wide receiver of the uh, group of outstanding wide receivers for Florida. Right. Uh, we talked to Andre before the LSU game, and he told us he was 100%. We watched the beginning of the game and said, we don't think he's 100%. Now we find out we were right. He said he was about 80, 85%, and he's telling us he's 90, 95% this time. He looks like he's back. First and 10 with 1.40 to go. Gators have all three timeouts remaining. Three wide right, one left. Here's Tebow. Underneath pass to Caldwell. Stumbles as he comes to the right. He's tripped up by Trevard Lindley, number 32. Well, Lindley is a ball hawk, but he's also showed that he can make tackles on the field. He's had a number of them, and this was an important one because it kept Bubba Caldwell from getting out of bounds and forcing either a quick snap here or a timeout call. Second down and six. And off Moore. Scrambles down to the 17, perhaps the 18-yard line. Braxton Kelly, number 56, makes the stop. Timeout is called by Florida, and that leaves 57 seconds remaining in the first half. 14-10, Gators with the ball and a four-point lead. Fourteen ten here with 57 seconds to go and a second down, third down and four. How's Tim Tebow? Well, he's on? doing real well. Eight for nine passing, but he does it all. You know, he gives you that physical play that we talked about when he runs the ball. That opens it up for the short passing game. He's also going to roll out and hit his weapons. And then that devastating play action pass attack where he can get the big play. Tebow has kept his Kentucky defense off balance now. Third and medium. Will it be the three-man drop a tackle? Will Kentucky put pressure on him? Very difficult choice for Kentucky. They don't like the matchups in the secondary man-to-man. -man. 
Hand off to Harvin on the sweep to the left side on third and four, and he appears to have enough for the first down. Clock will stop as the chain is moved. Find ways to get Harvin the football. That's one of the notes on Dan Mullen's card up in the press box. How can we get our playmakers the ball? One of them is to put him at wide receiver, motion him in, just run a sweep. First down and 10. Tebow fires it. Ingram incomplete. Second down and 10. 40 seconds to go. This uh, current opportunity set up by the 61-yard kickoff return from Brandon James. Second down. Playbook is wide open because Florida has two timeouts remaining. That means the quarterback draws, the middle screens, everything is available for Dan Mullen to feature on this call with two timeouts to go. Dan Mullen, the offensive coordinator, 35 years of age, has been with Urban Meyer through the ride. Here's Tebow, pulls it down, fires it in the end zone, and close, and it's incomplete. Intended for Jared Faison, and it brings up third down and 10. Well, I'm pretty surprised Faison doesn't catch this ball this time. A little bootleg pass. Faison is wide open. Ball is delivered right on the numbers. Faison peaks, peaks, and does not catch that, and Urban Myers is going to be upset. How can you not catch that ball? Rich Brooks says, ooh. Dodged one there. Deep they did. Timeout is called by Florida. 34 seconds to go when we return. Gators with a third and 10. More than 70,000 here at Commonwealth Stadium. A matchup between the Kentucky Wildcats at 6-1 and one and the defending national champions. Kentucky jumps off to a 7-0 lead. Then Florida, two touchdown passes from Tim Tebow. The second, a 66-yard strike to Lewis Murphy. That made it 14-7. Kentucky has moved the ball, Gary, but all they've gotten out of their last three possessions, one field goal. Both defenses are kind of holding on. Both coaches thought this would be a high-scoring game. Both coaches were right. Neither defense can guess or predict what the other offense is going to call. And with these great athletes on both sides of the offense, it's almost impossible for them to get stops. Third and long, if Florida sticks it in the end zone, it will be a devastating blow for this Kentucky team. They clawed back to within four, then yielded the 61-yard kickoff return to Brandon James. Now, Tebow and the Gators, third and ten. Great matchup with Ingram to the left side of the formation. He runs into the end zone. They fire it to the goal line, down at the one. But that might be enough to move the chain. Percy Harvin with the catch. Now, in this situation, to keep your timeout alive, you should ground the ball. You don't need all four downs. Come up and ground it or run the sneak right now. Either way you want to do it. First and goal. Yep. Tebow. Stopped. 20 seconds to go. That forced a timeout after that one. I'm wondering if Tebow did that one on his own because uh, the strategy might have been the ground. It wasn't bad strategy to try to run the sneak right there when you everybody in the building thinks he's going to just ground it. Final time called by the Gators. We will step aside. Urban Meyer, Tim Tebow, and the rest of the offense uh, gathered around the head coach. It will be second down and goal. Strategy would probably be a pass on second down. That gives you options for third down. If you run the ball and you don't make it, you might not. You're right at that line where you might not be able to get lined up and ground the ball and get another play. Very interesting. Second and goal, a 14-10 Florida lead. 19 seconds to go before the break. The jump pass formation right here. Well, Tate Casey caught one against LSU out of this formation last year. Here's Tebow. It's the jump pass. It's a touchdown. This one caught by Aaron Fernandez. Jump pass formation for Vern again. Well, a year ago, I remembered Don McElhaney. How about Babe Perilli? 
Well, it was a great call because everyone thinks that it's going to be an inside run. It gives you an extra play if it's not open, and the formation, you know, maybe they didn't go back as far as we did. We were at that one against LSU. <laughs> this is not the offense of the 2000 and 21st century. It's the offense of the 50s. <laughs> But well, you got a lot of weapons. Fernandez catches this one. This was last year, remember? It was a double clutch. This time, same formation. You almost could see it coming. There's last year's again. When Tebow made an athletic play, this one was a gimme. Vern could have jumped up and done this one. Yeah. Look at this one. That one was like Gordon or an omelet at breakfast. It was so old. You ain't seen nothing yet. Wide smiles on that Gator bench, Tim Tebow. And the tight end who caught it. Uh, look what happened, these Florida guys. You gotta respect it. Tight end's gonna pop out so easy. Just jumping over the line, that's so pretty. Like, I don't want to date you, but did you ever use the jump pass? No, I did not no? use the jump pass. Hmm? I don't know if the goal line, I handed it off either to Ernest Viner or Billy Sims. They didn't let me do much down there. <laughs> Pretty good option. <laughs> That's right. Tebow, four of six on this touch. And again, you go back to the kickoff strategy. The kickoff, yes. And here's the script kick. This will be Dickie Lyons, Jr. Back to the 25, 30, and after the 38-yard line. Dickie Lyons, Jr. on the kickoff. And all of that set up by Brandon James on the kickoff. Yeah, kickoff into the wind. Keiston Moore, number 33, middle of your screen is gonna get a real nice springing block right here. Middle of your screen, there it is. Fitted, it's gonna allow James to break that play for the extra 20 yards that really put it into a position that led to that touchdown at the end of the half. And this guy, I'm telling you, if Florida wins it, this sophomore is gonna be the front runner for the Heisman at least until Thursday night when Boston College goes to Virginia Tech and Matt Ryan has his opportunity. First down and 10. 21 to 10 Gators. Here's Woodson coming to his left under pressure. Dropped. Justin Tratu, number 94, with a big sack that puts the plug in the first half. What might have been a devastating final three minutes for the Kentucky Wildcats. They are, however, four and one when trailing at the half this year. Tracy's with Wildcat coach Rich Books. Coach, so much talk about how this team would come out after last week's emotional win. How do you feel they've responded so far? Well, I think we've responded well. We, uh, we've missed a few open guys. Stevie steps out of bounds. Un, you know, I mean, we got a touchdown and he just drifted out of bounds and uh, we've moved the ball, but we haven't taken advantage of the scoring opportunity. So we've got to shore it up down there and punch him in for touchdowns. How do you contain Tim Tebow in this Florida offense? Well, I thought we've done a decent job of it. We gave up seven points, mostly on a kickoff return, and we've got to shore that up as well. Thanks a lot, coach. All right. Thank you, Tracy. 21-10 here, Gators lead by 11. We go back to Tim Brando in New York. Second half from Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, full house on hand. Kentucky goes after its ninth win in a row at home. It's seventh of the season. They're in familiar territory. They trail for the sixth time this year. They're four and one when trailing so far. And they will get the ball to begin the second half. Joey Eos will kick off. Dickie Lyons and Keenan Burton are the deep men for Kentucky. That's Lyons to the left. And uh, Kentucky will be going into a slight breeze. We saw it affect the kickoff late in the second quarter. Joey Eos. And this will be Dickie Lyons Jr. from the five. Back to 
the 20 and down at the 27 yard line. Lions Jr. as this uh, Kentucky team finds itself, I guess, uh, Gary, right where they want them. So. I think you're right. Uh, what, what's the three signature wins for Kentucky this year? Louisville, Arkansas. LSU. They were behind in each one of those games, as you were mentioning. They came back. Remember, at the end of the third quarter, they were down by 13 to LSU. And also, remember, was Florida was up by 10 against LSU. So both teams at halftime are saying, score is 0-0. Let's just keep playing here. Now, Andre Woodson sacked three times in the first half. And off left side. A moment ago, Tracy caught up with Rich Brooks for an injury update. Trace? Coach, we saw Woodson take a hit to the knee in the first half. Then Burton and Dixon went down. Can you tell us about their injuries? Well, uh, Burton uh, has taped his knee up, and he's going to try and see if he can go. Uh, Dixon looks like he's done for the day. Uh, Woodson's fine. What is Dixon's injury? Uh, it's an ankle. Don't know the severity of it. We did x-ray it, and that's negative, and that's good news. Thanks a lot, Coach. Well, it's not good news overall, though, for the Wildcats. So Dixon will give way to Derek Locke, the true freshman out of Hugo, Oklahoma. It is a big story because I talked to the Florida coaches, and they felt without Raphael Little, Kentucky's passing attack was about 20% easier to defend. That's how important Little was to the passing attack and felt they felt it would be easier for them to match up with Tammy without Little. Now Dixon's gone. And that leaves it... Uh, to Derek Locke, the freshman who had a big game last week, and Woodson does get rid of it, and it's incomplete over the head of Brandon Spikes. And how about trends in the first half, Gary? Well, we saw what Tebow did in the first half. He had an outstanding first half, obviously. It's not that Woodson completed 14. It was of the six that he missed. He probably had two big plays there, three sacks, None last week, and no penalty yards in this game. No penalties. Think about that. Last week against LSU, Florida only had two in that football game. Back-to-back -back games. Tim Maste is on to punt, and Brandon James, who had an 83-yard punt return for a touchdown against Tennessee, is back to return it. Now we've got the pre-snap flag. I think Kentucky flinched. Thomas Ritter, the referee. Prior to the snap, false start, 38, offense, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. That's John Connor, the fullback. Florida had a fake on. Kentucky adjusted to it, brought their wings in. Florida substituted. Now they have the return game on. They're going to look for a big return now. Maste out of Murray, Kentucky. On the punt, and they do have the return all the way. Oh, this is a very shit. poor punt. Out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Whoa. Out of bounds at the UK 46. 25-yard punt and nothing on the return. Well, the Florida Gator family is uh, mourning the, the unexpected death of Michael Guilford. 19-year-old walk-on was killed in a motorcycle accident on October 12th along with uh, a young woman who was a friend of his, also a student at the University of Florida. Just one of the many issues that this uh, Florida Gator team has dealt with, the death of a teammate, Michael Guilford. There was a pause for a moment in his honor before this game began. Here's Murphy out of bounds on the right side. And that's a quick pass to Tim Pivo. So Kentucky doesn't get what they needed was just yeah. some kind of sustained drive. It's sure. And, you know, I notice about Florida, we've heard from the Kentucky coaches that when number 29 Rutledge is in the game for Florida, they're expecting the run game. I think Florida self-scouted themselves. Urban Meyer, they've run a lot of play-action passes with number 29 in the game. It's almost the Billy Lasko position that he's doing, Rutledge is, and that's uh, kind of busting the keys. There is a deep ball available against Kentucky. They are squatting big time right now. Well, it was close enough to dictate a measurement, so the chain brought uh, all the way across the field. There has been one huge pass play. That was back in the first quarter, 66 yards, Tebow to Lewis Murphy. And 
It is a first down and 10 for Florida. And Gary pointed out that both of these Gator losses were in the West, SEC West. They lost at home to Auburn. Then that uh, emotional defeat to LSU. They did have last week off, and it uh, appears to have had benefits. Rutledge, left side. Here's Tebow. Now for more on Michael Guilford's uh, death, let's go down to Tracy Wolfson. Thanks, Vern. One way Meyer helped his team mourn was by having former NFL wide receiver and friend Chris Carter come to speak. Carter lost two teammates during his playing days. I spoke with him this week. He said he told them, all you can control is the dash between life. Enjoy it. Enjoy football. Don't take this time for granted. All right, Trace, thank you. Second down and four. Rutledge still in. Tebow in the spread. Three load up to the left. Quarterback draw. And he pulls his way down to the 25 yard line. You notice there's a sticker on the back of the helmets being worn in honor of Michael Guilford. A lot of defensive coordinators tell you that preparing for Florida's offense is like preparing for three different offenses in one. What he's done with Tebow and why he's so valuable, he's taken a finesse offense and made it physical because of this quarterback. And again, he's out of the spread, five yards back. This is Caldwell, goes in motion. They hand it off. Caldwell on the sweep. He's got Keaston Moore in front. A missed tackle. Caldwell inside the 10. Braxton Kelly thought he had him. He did not. You can see that this offense in this game has been dedicated to getting more people to run the ball. We showed you that stat in the first half that Tebow was running the ball too much. Florida has adjusted during the bye week, and they are committed to getting more guys to run the ball in their offense, and Kentucky just cannot find answers right now. They are on their heels on almost every snap. Marcus Gilbert is an extra tight end. He's tight to the right. Hernandez to the left. Rutledge is the fullback. Tebow will run it. Look at that. I mean, it was a fine collective effort by Kentucky, but Tebow, when the shoulder goes down, yep. the oomph goes south. I think he looks fresher. The bye week has helped him, Tebow, more than anybody probably in the country. Taking all those hits in all these SEC games, he looks stronger and for, look at that. That is amazing. Second and goal. You know, he's, he's a glorified single wing quarterback who has three touchdown passes in this game. Florida 21 on the ground, 14 in the air. And Tebow's career, 1,007 yards, a 4.9 average. Second down and goal. Well, there we are. The, oh, it's batted down. Hit by Dominic Lewis, number 20. Batted down by Dominic Lewis. Yeah, I think this is a touchdown. If Lewis doesn't get a pick of it, a little piece of it, his right hand comes up. Top of the screen. Watch him jump. Put that right hand up. Deflect that ball. Harvin was open on the play. Third and goal. Field goal makes it a 14-point game. Still a two-possession game. Kentucky trailed LSU in the third quarter last week, 27-14. Tebow with Caldwell in the slot. Runs to his left. He's got a man wide open. It's Caldwell. Touchdown, Florida. Tebow's pass. Flag is down. I'll tell you, Kentucky's praying that this is an illegal formation here. Same play, there it is. Same play that Ingram ran. They just did it with different players this time. Two guys bump inside, the inside slot rubs off. Same play, this time Ingram's picking. Illegal shift on the offense. Number 81, five yard penalty, main third down. 
Coming across, these two receivers are going to come out for Caldwell coming underneath. Watch this. Same play that Ingram misses an easy pitch and catch. And fortunately for Kentucky, it was an either illegal shift or formation or something. So they have a chance to maybe survive this. It's third and goal. That's Harvin who starts in motion. They load up to the left side. Tebow hit, bounces off, goes right, fires, touchdown. Andre Caldwell from Tim Tebow. Tebow has thrown four in this game. And the air is going out of the balloon in Commonwealth. A penalty is declined. Touchdown. Well, the ball was intended to go to Harvin inside. There was a holding penalty on the play that allowed, well, I think it was Wesley Woodyard, number 16, that held on Harvin, and that forced Tebow to go to his next receiver, and he made the play. And we are told that the, the, the play is being reviewed upstairs to certify possession. Tries to go inside, holding on the primary receiver, gets out of the pocket. And does he catch it? Does the ball hit the ground? They're taking a peek at that one. Boy, big, big time. They had the matchup inside. There's the catch again. And again, the official back good judged, mechanics. Yeah, yep. back jumped right there in position. He had actually so far the best look on this one. Inside Harvin matchup on Woodyard is where they wanted to go, and Tebow's legs got him to another layer of the, the defense. Reviews. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Well, the task for Rich Brooks' team is formidable now. Trailing this uh, high-powered and very fresh Florida team, they had the the open week. The question, one of the questions coming in was uh, the effect of the emotional victory last week in triple overtime against Louisiana State. Would it affect negatively this bunch? And apparently it has. Play was designed to go right here. There's Harvin. You're going to see the matchup inside against Wesley Woodyard. This is why it had to be turned down. There's the hold. Great call inside. That forced Tebow to pull the ball down and see a wide open Andre Caldwell just dancing and bouncing around. Tebow again is finding ways to make plays. Tim Tebow, the sophomore, is 12 of 16 for four touchdowns, one of which was caught by Andre Caldwell. 11.38 to go in the third. It's been all Florida here for the last quarter and a half. Can't overestimate the significance of a kickoff return by Brandon James that helped set up the touchdown at the end of the first half. I ran into Kenny Skywalker, the great All-American sure basketball player. do remember player. him. Great basketball player. And he said, welcome back to Kentucky, a football school. <laughs> That's what they said in the paper today. It's great to be a part of college football. And the kickoff by the Gators. Joey Eos is taken by Dickie Lyons, Jr. Tries to find some room. He gets out to the 22-yard line. Tackle made by Brian Thomas. Well, we continue the celebration of 75 years of SEC football. One of the charter members, University of Kentucky, and since 1933, it's, uh, it's been a lot of periods of drought. But they're celebrating this year. Bear Bryant, a coach here. Bay Perilli, he of the jump pass. <laughs> Jeff Van Note, Art Still. Tim Couch, who is here in attendance today. Bay Perilli was my first professional coach, my first professional head coach. Really? New York Stars in the World Football League. I made about $480 that year. <laughs> Here's Woodson, right side. Catch is made by Steve Johnson, number 13. And the Wildcats... Uh, they trailed LSU here in the third quarter last week, 27-14, but they seem to have a lot more energy in that game. Yeah, I guess things were working better. I mean, Woodson's misses have really paid, really taken a toll on this game. When, you're when you build the offense around the quarterback and he misses, things don't work well. First down, here's Woodson back. Goes deep right side. 
And again, this one just beyond the outstretched arms of Keenan Burton, Major Wright, was defending. How about the misses, Gary, in the first half? Yeah, we talked 16 for 20, but there was actually three plays. There's one right there, the catch by Johnson. Here's another one the ball lands out of bounds on. And then, of course, on down there when they were near the goal line, receivers and quarterbacks were not in the same spot. So on his four misses, Three of them could have been points on the scoreboard for Kentucky. Now 15 of 24, and it's second down and 10. Derek Locke is in a tailback blitz inside pass, caught by Jacob Tammy, the tight end. Uh, I really don't understand why this guy's not dialed in on the game. I really don't. He's so valuable. He's so good. If you watch college football, when you have a guy, you got to live with some of the things he doesn't do. He's not a great blocker. So what you have to do is go to some of the things he does do well. There's a wide receiver screen to a tight end, basically, is what happens. It goes out, comes back in. Christian Johnson. Dickie Lyons flinch to the outside, and that'll be a five-yard penalty. Dead ball, false start. Number 12, offense, five-yard penalty, remains second down. Well, Jacob Tammy, uh, the Red Lobster Scholar Athlete of the Day, guess who it might be. Graduated in three years with a 3.81 grade point average. Semi-finalist for the Dratty Award, which will be uh, determined and uh, awarded in New York in early December. That is, of course, the academic Heisman. Derek Locke almost got 15. He's going to, I think, will be just short of the first down. Inside trap block is what happens. You spring him. It's first and long. You're going to see it come across and kick out right here. Actually, it was the other way. Pardon me. Good block in there from the tackle coming down. Springs lock and uh, getting chased. You're not going to catch him, but Major Wright playing the eraser position. Doesn't quite do it like Reggie Nelson, but does make a tackle on the play. Justin Jeffries, number 76, the man who provided the block. And uh, they'll stretch the chain. He got a first down. Wow, that's huge. That is yep. huge. If Kentucky can get it to the fourth quarter within two scores, they're going to feel like they have a chance to win this game. Locke will get a rest on this play. And Alfonso Smith, who's missed the last three games, with a high ankle sprain, a sophomore from Louisville by way of California is in the lineup now. Florida with four down, Woodson with the change. Ten minutes to go, third quarter. Right side. Keenan Burton with the catch, number 19. And we'll go back to New York for this update with Tim Brandon. Vernon Gary in this go figure season, some trickeration in the Rose Bowl. Brandon Brazel of UCLA hits Dominic Johnson with his 29 yard touchdown pass. It's 20 to 14 Bruins. They're unbeaten in Pac 10 play. And this is the team that was waxed by Utah. I think. <laughs> That's right. 44 nothing, right? <laughs> Second down from the 35. Draw play. Lock is back Whoa. in there. He Whoa. gets nada. Yeah. Big Brandon Spikes, who is uh, Florida people will tell you is going to be maybe their best linebacker ever. He's really, when you look at him, he's the biggest guy on the defense. He's about goes about six foot five and is a tackling machine. He hasn't even learned how to play the position yet. Spikes has eight tackles today. It's third down, three. Four down territory. Stunts by the Florida defense. Woodson avoids the rush, pulls up, lobs it. Caught by Dickie Lyons Jr. That's a first down. Keenan Burton complaining about downfield activity. See the two quarterbacks. Tebow's doing it spectacularly. Woodson has been coming on, thrown for 200 yards, obviously, but he is really, you know, the whole offense, he just has not been making the big plays. Last week, LSU did not make the big plays. This week, Kentucky's not making the big plays. First down and 10, Locke 
right side. Four man floor to rush. Woodson holds it. Has a man open. Caught at the five. Jacob Tammy touchdown, 28 yards. You don't understand why they don't go to this guy more. He is a total mismatch on the field. He's got a linebacker on him. Senior who told us last week his dream was to play here. He was offered a scholarship. He missed his visit because his high school team, Danville, lost a game after having won 47 in a row. And Guy Morris withdrew the scholarship. There were probation limitations involved as well. I love that they're kicking the extra point here. 11 points is better than 12. You don't want to chase it, make it a 10-point game. Lomas Sieber gets the extra point. It's 28-17. Beautifully designed play. It's a fake halfback screen. Watch all of the linemen go out. There's Tammy right there. It's a fake screen. There go the linemen out. There's the receiver coming back in. Lock. You fake it one way. You've got a linebacker matched up to him. A.J. Jones, he can't handle it. Fake the screen. Use the whole offense. And how about this? Hit the guy when he's open. Make a play. That's what's been missing. Well, it's uh, kind of a beautiful part of the country. In Keeneland, they're racing the thoroughbreds off. Don't forget the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. That's coming up. By the way, remember we were looking for Kentucky Omens last week? Yes. <clears throat> well, in the fourth race in Keeneland yesterday, the winning horse was New Believer. Whoa, that's the theme here, isn't huh? it? Huh? You never know. Florida's got to have something to say about that, but a big, big drive for Kentucky. Now the Gators, late in the second half, they elected to kick it deep to Brandon James. Might they want to forget that and squib it? It's into the win. There you are, onside kick. And he went 10 yards. I don't know. Oh, he did. It's going to be a, re a review here. I don't know if it went. I thought he did. It'll be close. I don't think so. No? Your eyes are fresher and younger than mine. Well, first thing, you shouldn't do that to the right side in front of the Florida bench. I'm telling you they're at right now. You should do it in front of your own bench. Kick it to the left side. Antoine Kicking Brown. team touched the ball before it went 10 yards. Therefore, we got an illegal touching. First down. I thought it did. Gary prevails. Well, it's got to go right side, way out. Let's see if we can see any. Can't quite tell There's the depth the on that one. She's right on the line. It's going to be tough to over. You can't. You cannot. Re, it's reviewable play, but pro, this is not enough information. I no. can't tell depth on that look. Not at all. Will the replay official stop the game and try to wait for more looks? That's going to be the question. Yes, he will. The prior play is under further review. And so uh, we'll give you the best perspective that we have. And that is this end zone. I think he's short, but I don't, there's nothing there to say he's that that's a no. I mean, I, the call was short. I think he's short. The official, here's a, a blimp look at it. This official right here throws his beanbag short of the line. What's oh, the next official, baby? Watch it right there on the 35 yard line. It's actually this official that throws his beanbag to the left of the line. He makes a left-hand toss on it. Well, I would say there's not enough uh, well, there to overturn. That's yeah. short. That's short. Uh, I, I think that's clearly short. Caught that ball clearly on his left shoulder. He was he was straddling the line. Vern is hoping for the, the <laughs> and I'm I'm just against them. <laughs> Golf so easy. The ball either goes in the hole or not. Right? right. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're donning gloves here. 
really couldn't have let the ball go. There was nothing you, gonna, you could have done if you're out there because the ball would have gone out of bounds had he not caught it right there. Right. I just don't think there's enough there to overturn the call. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Florida. Let's look at this. This this was a gamble. We'll admit that. But it was a good gamble. It was wide open for the onside kick if had it been executed. Again, execution has not been there for Kentucky so far in this football game. The plays have been there. They're not making them. I'm just guessing now, but Urban Meyer was a little here's the here's Tebow going deep. And he overthrows Percy Harvin. You, you got a glimpse of Urban Meyer getting a little emotional with one of his assistant coaches. Now he prides himself on special teams play. And I think if that was just a what the heck were we doing? Right. That's right. Good call. Good call. Okay. <laughs> Pretty confident, was he? See, now, if that's on the other sideline, I mean, if you kick it to the left to your own bench, you can have your coaches and players work in the official. Tebow back. Across the middle. Caught. Caldwell starts left. Mm -hmm. uh, missed tackle. And out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Micah Johnson. What a difference this Florida team is with a healthy Bubba Caldwell. I mean, he is so there. Top of your screen, wide receiver to the left, comes over the middle, zone coverage. One missed tackle, two missed tackles. If you want to judge a team that kind of, you know, it was so easy to play real physical last week against LSU because LSU ran at him. It's tough to play physical against this Florida offense. Brandon James is in a tailback alongside Tebow. Riley Cooper starts in motion. They flip it out for James. You get the idea that when he's on the field, there's a play designed for him. Sure is. Flag went early. I don't yep. know if it was a far in side. The, someone in the neutral zone or an illegal formation again. Tebow was sure of it. Probably should take that penalty if it's uh, you know five yards and you stay first and five. How much did they get on that play? Six, seven, eight yards. Or? Yeah. Now they're going to take that penalty. I'm pretty sure. Which would give them a first, first and five. five. Yep. Yes. Because even if you get six, seven yards, you're you're better Outside. off with the down. Left defensive tackle on the defense. Five yard penalty. Rich Book says, give me a number. Who? <laughs> Who? Give me a number. Rich Brooks, longtime coach at the University of Oregon. Matter of fact, we're playing on CM Newton Field here, the former Kentucky athletic director. The, the field at the University of Oregon, Brooks Field. I'll be done. Named in his honor. First down. Well, you got a big quarterback draw here, don't you? I'm not disagreeing with you, your call. Well, or you could have him hand it off. Same thing. You gotta yeah. run, run a guy in. You start out and spread, you move somebody back, and you run the ball up the middle. Largest crowd in the history of Commonwealth Stadium here today. 71,024. The listed capacity at 67,000. They gather on a beautiful October afternoon and watch the Kentucky team jump out to a 7-0 lead. Tebow threw for two to make it 14-7. With a score 14-10, this man, a jump pass to his tight end, Aaron Hernandez. It was 21-10 at the break. Right now, 28-17. There's Tebow. He's like a basketball coach, the way he works the sidelines, don't you think, Vernon? I mean, he's feet, he's like, well, I don't want I was going to say Patino, but I, I want to make sure I can get out of this place. Like, yeah, how about that, Billy he, Gillespie? Yeah, I go Billy Gillespie. Yeah, okay. I, I, I knew Patino wasn't here. I just, that was, <laughs> I want to make sure I get off the elevator. Now. Yeah, yeah. Somebody well, grab me. Well, they need a coaching box in football, maybe, <laughs> That's huh? That's right. He was, he was three feet, three yards. 
on the field. Here's Tebow on second Urban's down. Urban's trying to call timeout, and he's on the 15-yard line he is. running he's, out. He's five yards I out. I think that rule has to change in college football. I think timeouts must be called with somebody on the field. I don't like this coach calling it out. That which leads to those last-second timeouts. Don't like it. On the sideline, Percy Harvin, 28-17, 6 3 to go in the third. And uh, where do you wind him up? That's right. That's part of the game plan. Not only do they get touches for Percy Harvin, they find ways to hide Harvin around the formations, in the backfield, in the slot, in the slot going in motion, different ways to get your playmaker the ball in this offense. Where will he go now? I think he's in the slot again. This is where he got the holding penalty last time. And that freed up Andre Caldwell. Yep. He's in the slot to the left. There he is, right there. Tebow back. Fires it deep. Oh, he dropped it. Incomplete. Oh, Keystone Moore. All by his lonesome. Harvin took two guys. Keiston Moore is wide open. Here's Harvin going across the formation. Keiston Moore, oh, he had to knock that one down. Hit him right in the face mask for what could have been the fifth touchdown pass of the game. Huge, huge play here. It will be a 14-point playing game if they can stop him. Harvin again in the slot. Number seven, Ingram in the other slot, both sides. Here's Tebow back. Right side, Ingram cannot hold on. It'll be fourth down. Two drops, two touchdown passes. Well, you think this is a touchdown. You're giving your ball slot one side, Harbin, slot the other side. A six foot five inch guy that will catch that ball 95 out of 100 times. Tebow puts it right there. He should have. Two touchdown passes right there, and it's going to end up being just a 14-point lead if this field goal is made. Eos is 5 of 7. He had one blocked in the loss at home to Auburn. A 21-yard field goal. And he puts it inside the right upright. But back-to-back -back drops, first by Keiston Moore, then by Ingram. Could things be changing? Florida was making all the plays. Now Kentucky has started to make the plays. Good news for Kentucky. Tuesday on CBS, how much would you pay to protect your family? Jimmy Smith's stars in the powerful new Kane. Tuesday at 10, 9 central on CBS, America's most watched network. When well, you were down doing the golf tournament, I was watching Kane. Were you now? Yeah, no, well, we were raising in my Kane. rotation now. <laughs> <laughs> you were raising. I heard. Oh. That's a private one. Yeah. Well, those were two huge drops. I mean, let's say, you know, that kept it a 14-point game. Think back, Vern. Big drop by LSU right at this time of the game. Singer drops it for LSU. Kept it to be a two-touchdown game. That's where it is now. And you just saw the drops. Subsequent uh, Easton Moore and then Ingram. Here's Lyons Jr. Mickey Lyons Jr. on the return. Keaston Moore first, Gary. Now look, this game is a 14-point game, so add four points. Instead of 31, it's 35. Keaston Moore right in the face mask. That was the easier one, but you expect the big Cornelius Ingram to make that one two of them. So instead of it being a 14-point game, I mean, excuse me, a 19-point game, it is a 14-point game. That means they can be patient and run the ball just like last week against LSU. First down and 10, 543 to go in the third. Draw play. Left side, Derek Watt. And let's go back to the studio for this Liberty Mutual update. Here's Tim Brenner. Fellas, you know Ohio State is number one because of their defense, but their offense has gotten sloppy. They give up two touchdowns in a minute and four seconds. This is uh, Sir Darian Adams taking in the Todd Beckman fumble. Two touchdowns in a minute and four seconds. In the fourth, Ohio State clings to a 10-point lead. Burn. All right, Tim, second down and six here. 31-17, Florida. Woodson goes right side. Joe Hayden over the back and no flag. When, it, when are you going to learn? 
You got to throw that ball the other way. You're never <laughs> going to get that call over there. I hate. <laughs> that Florida <laughs> bench is not going to give you that call. Watch this. Clearly, he touches the receiver just as he reaches over the back. Look at the look at the coaches clapping in the background. Good play, good play, good play. On the other bench, it would have been interference, interference. And it's third down and six. Woodson, pressure from the edge, pumps once, goes deep, caught. First down at the 46. Catch made by Steve Johnson, number 13. Well, that was a pocket pass. They threw the quick pass on first down. Watch this front here. This is the pass rush that everybody feared. Look at that. Pump fake, stay, stay. A perfectly delivered ball, but give that one to the offensive line. And that allows this Kentucky offense to do what they want to do, which means throw it a lot of different ways. Quick, pocket, play action, and rollout. First down and 10, and Woodson will throw. No, he will not. That's the... Fourth sack today. This one from Javier Estopinen, the often injured junior. Well, last year's game was six sacks by the Florida defensive line, but that was a different defensive line. Those guys, you know, controlled football games for Florida. Four sacks today seems to be larger to me than the six sacks last year. And this is an offensive line that yielded zero sacks against LSU last week. One of the big differences in the ball game. Little inside screen to Johnson. He cuts left and is down at the 50-yard line. It'll be third down. Tackle made by Major Wright, number 21. When the pass rush comes, the adjustment is the wide receiver screen to the bottom of the screen. Watch your pass rush. You hit my quarterback, I'm going to hit you with one of these wide receiver screens right here. That's their answer. They don't have the option. They don't have a running quarterback. That's what they dial. Third and seven. Boy, it took a long time to get this play back in. Four seconds. He beat it. Right side. Again, it's Dickie Lyons, Jr. He's got speed. Breaks the tackle. Foot race. Touchdown, Kentucky. Joker Phillips, the offensive coordinator. Ray Woodson to Dickey Lyons Jr. second time today. It was the perfect call. Joker Phillips was probably fumbling through his pages saying, where's that call? They're coming with the blitz. I want this one. It was worth the wait. <laughs> Kudos to that guy. He dialed up the perfect call. Lona Sieber with the extra point. It's a seven-point game with 3.05 to go in the third quarter. If you know the blitz is coming, and here comes the blitz, you react by throwing the wide receiver screen. Here it comes. Man-to-man, -man, you only need one block. You get it inside. I think it was Eric Scott, the center, got the key block. Dickey Lyons runs through a tackle, and that's all there was to it. Dickey Lyons Jr. told us yesterday he was clocked in 4.43 in the 40-yard dash. It was just enough. Well, his own coaches called Dickey Lyons Jr. goofy, and they say it with affection. We talked to him yesterday afternoon, said, were you a big football fan growing up? He said, no, I was a country club kid. Yeah. I was into swimming and golf and soccer. Said he didn't play football till ninth grade. 4-4-3. Four, four, Calls himself the Wes Welker of this offense. I'm starting to believe him. Seven-point game. Here's the kick from Day. That chases Brandon James. There's another... Touchback at 16 for the season. 
And how Vicky Lyons may have changed the tenor of the game last week. He sure did. This was a blow up block. Watch him get Craig Stelts. Lifts him up three feet. That just electrified his teammates. Oh, knocked the helmet right off. And Craig Stelts and Dickie Lyons faced each other at high school. He said he always beat me. But on that one, I knocked him out. Coach has said that block changed the whole tenor of the game against Louisiana State. Now the crowd is back in this one. Riley Cooper starts in motion. Tebow hands it off. They come right. Harvin flag. Late flag thrown by the field judge. It was a big time tackle that time. I think it was Shamari Moore made that play. Ooh, a penalty. I'll tell you, mistakes are starting to happen. It's a long football game. During the run, holding number 86, offense. 10 yard penalty to the end of the run. Replay first foul. That's Riley Cooper. Well, Gary mentioned the drop by Keiston Moore, and it brought to mind one of the key plays last week, the drop by Keith Singer. This made it. It could have broke the game wide open. Singer has it, drops it, made it a 13-point game, kept Kentucky in the football game. Out of the backfield, here's Andre Caldwell. Slides down at the 28. And there were... Memorably, two drops on the last drive, the first by Keiston Moore and then Cornelius Ingram. Yeah, his member. Now, this, instead of a 14 point game, add four points. One drop, two drops. Things happen, and then Kentucky comes right back and drives it down the throat and puts on seven points. Bubba Caldwell is 100%. I'm telling you, if he's any faster, I, I, I want to see him play. Second down and two. Tebow turned to fake it to the left. Keystone Moore went right. Well, the similarities here are getting a little eerie. Let's go down to Tracy. That's true, guys. Not only the, is the crowd back in this, but the sideline back in it. Dickie Lyons Jr. with the game-changing performance last week. He went up to his receivers and he said, you guys, this is just like against LSU. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And then he went back out there and scored the touchdown. Rich Brooks with a pat on the shoulder told us yesterday, oh, here's a sideline. No, it's going to nope. be 12 men in the huddle. Illegal okay. substitution. Now, broke Thomas the, Ritter was... Broke, yep. the, broke the huddle with 12. Substitution infraction on the offense. Breaking the huddle with 12 players. Five-yard penalty. First half. I'm going to see it. The 12th guy comes in. Watch, there's 12 guys in the huddle. One more guy. Harbin's going to leave late right there. Yep. There's the 12th guy that leaves late, and that's going to be an illegal substitution call. First and 15. 31-24 with 90 seconds to go, third quarter. That's Caldwell. Option play. Tebow keeps. Tebow is cut down by Jeremy Jarman. The fascinating young man whom we spent time with last week. Jarman, who was uh, interested in theater, interested in the diplomatic corps. Mentioned to you last week that he played the uh, Colonel Nathan Jessup role. That's Jack Nicholson's role in the stage production of A Few Good Men. He also played Macduff in Macbeth. Uh -huh. You're way ahead of me in the reading. You're way ahead of me. Second and 14. Tebow caught a drop. Third down. Well, remember, we, uh, we talked with Jeremy Jarman, asked him to deliver the famous speech, and here's his version. You can't handle it because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties, you want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. We use words like honor, code, loyalty. You want the truth? 
You can't handle the truth. And the truth is, right now, we've got a heck of a ball game. Sure do. Third and seven. Tebow, Caldwell, yep. what a combination. Yep. And he breaks it out to the 49-yard line, a gain of 13. It's almost not fair. You got Harvin, you got Ingram, and now with a healthy, oh, now that's the way you get away from a jam. You beat him at the line of scrimmage, and he just handled Lindley on that one. He hadn't seen anybody like Harvin like that before. We've reached the end of three in Lexington, Kentucky. Florida leads at 31-24. We'll return right after this word from your local station. Tim Tebow has thrown for four touchdowns in this ball game, had a fifth touchdown pass drop. We begin the fourth. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson from Commonwealth Stadium, 31-24, Florida. Tebow on first down 10, pulls it back, rolls out, lobs it. It's caught by Keiston Moore, and he avoids a tackle and then is knocked out of bounds. Well, you saw Tebow throw the ball again. He's been involved in this try, but look, a couple of historical players in college football, Vince Young and Troy Smith, the passing percentages are about the same, 97%, obviously, but look at the rushes. Vince Young rushed the ball 26% of the time for the team. Troy Smith just 15%. Tebow, 46%. Tebow is running two-thirds of the offense, either running the ball or passing the ball. Those are uncharted water. That's why he's the front runner for the Heisman if he wins this game. Second down and three. Quarterback draw. He comes left, gets a great block from Watkins on the left tackle spot. And he is out of bounds at the 37-yard uh, line. We're back here in Lexington. Uh, I didn't think we could get this fortunate to get this kind of compelling <laughs> game, but we have. And, and uh, how, what do you think? Of, let's talk about Kentucky and the resiliency they've shown again today. Right. I never really buy into that not enough gas in the tank. I mean, this is a Kentucky team that had to play these same big schools when they weren't as good before. At least now they have talent and they can match up. They're not intimidated by anyone anymore. Now they're on defense right now, and Tebow has the Gators moving. And uh, flag down. Seems to be, well, let's let Thomas Ritter straighten it out. Dead ball, encroachment, number one on the offense. Lining up in the neutral zone, five-yard penalty, remains first down. On this drive, eight plays have been run. Tebow has either run or passed on seven of the eight. I'd rather expect that trend to continue. Yes, I do, too. Huh. But when you lose, you second-guess yourself after the game because you said we used them too much. He'll throw it now, or run it, rather. And he's uh, inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. Marcus McClinton made the tackle. And that's going to set up a second down. By Myron Fryer. Tebow ran it 27 times in that win at Ole Miss. And in this game, he's either thrown it or passed it 32 out of the 52 plays. Second down. He'll run again. He stopped short. It'll be third down at the 26. 28-yard line. He took a hit on that one. He felt this one. David Jones joined by Wesley Woodyard on the stop. Obviously, it's a called pass. Nobody open. Rides up in the pocket. Watch him take one here. 
Oh, he got it from Woodyard, really heavy, and kind of got up a little ginger. I don't know. Superman doesn't get up gingerly very often. Now, did we confirm that he did play the role of Superman in a high school play? I do not know that. That rumor reached this broadcast booth. Uh, Third down. Well, Harvin and Ingram on the same side in the slot right here. Faison goes back next to Debo. Jared Faison gets the handoff. He struggles and fights. And he's got a first down at the 24. Sure does. One of my favorite players. I went out and watched Florida. Uh, oh, it was almost two years ago now. Faison was a true freshman. He caught my eye right away. A high school quarterback. He's gotten so much bigger. Now he's half running back. Look him run through that tackle by Micah Johnson that time. That was a big play. And a first down and 10 at the 24. This will be the 12th play of the drive thus far. Eight runs, three passes. Seven point game. Handed off to Harvin. He comes left. He's got blockers in front, and he's got great speed, and he has a touchdown. Well, we said Hyde Harvin. That's the exact play we saw the last time we spotlighted him. We showed that kind of freeze frame. They come back with it again, and this time he bursted through. 24 yards. Well, it's hiding Harvin and finding ways to get the ball to your playmakers. So many weapons. Joey Eos with the extra point. And with three minutes and three seconds gone in the fourth quarter, the Gators reestablish a 14-point lead. Whoops, I missed them with my highlight. You get the idea. I'll give you one more chance right there. There he is. It's easier to do with the pencil than the highlight. That's why they're high. <laughs> Hand off. Same play we saw before. This time he just squirts through. Good blocking up front, obviously. That guy has got a burst that no one else has. Gators lead it by 14. It's time for our Geico scoring recap. All right, take a big deep breath and stick with me on this one. Dickey Lyons opened the scoring, 7 0 Kentucky. Then Tebow took over. First, a touchdown toss to Cornelius Ingram. That was 10 yards, tied it up at 7 all. Next, quarterback draw fake. He goes deep to Lewis Murphy, 66 yards. Ford is up 14 to 7. That was followed by. Alona Sieber, 27-yard field goal, 14 to 10. And just prior to halftime, Tim Tebow emulating Babe Perilli from the 50s. Second time he's thrown a jump pass for a touchdown. In the third quarter, Andre Caldwell, an eight-yard touchdown reception, 28-10. 18-point lead, Jacob Tammy got this touchdown pass from Andre Woodson, 28-17. Kentucky starts to fight back. Joey Eos with a 21-yard field goal made it 31 to 17. Next up, Dickey Lyons, a 50-yard touchdown on the inside screen, a 31-24 game. And just a moment ago, it was Percy Harvin on a 24-yard touchdown run to make it 38-24. I am going to step <laughs> aside and catch my breath. Let me help you out. After that, a hit to Tebow. The next two calls, when we thought he might have been rocked, were to Faison and Harvin. Both were positive plays. The second one, a touchdown. I think he got rocked pretty good there. But that 12-play answer, when everybody in the crowd here thought that Kentucky taking control back into the game, was a great answer. Here's the kick. This will be Dickie Lyons, Jr., and he drops to a knee. It's a touchback. <laughs> for Joey Eos. Well, Rich Brooks said, you know, we might need in the 30s to win this game. Boy, could he, he couldn't have been more wrong. He's going to need in the 40s to win this yeah. game, it looks like. <laughs> and that, that's not even counting overtime. Uh, Rich Brooks. His daughter, Carrie, by the way, a colleague of ours for a number of years at CBS, uh, one of the outstanding camera persons on our crew, and Carrie is expecting her first child in January. She's here with uh, her mom and dad visiting from Atlanta. First down and 10. Right side, Derek Watt. Gary Brooks, handheld camera person. 
and she was outstanding. I talked to her before the game. She's not sure she's going to come back to work. This will be her first child and has a look of concern now. She looks down at uh, the effort of her father's football team. Second and seven. It's like a coach's daughter right there. She knows how to get intense into the game. Derek Locke is a running back. Tony Dixon out with an injury. Right side. Jacob Tammy. And he is inbounds and no flag. Joe Hayden made the tackle. Let's go back to New York and spend this moment with Tim Brando. Vern, you and Gary are seeing two great quarterbacks. There's another one in the Big 12 named Chase Daniel. Here he's going to hit Jeremy Macklin, 57 yards. They break open what had been a close game with Texas Tech, 21 unanswered points. And uh, let's go back to Vern. All right, Tim, thank you. It's third and short. Oh, I don't think he got it. I, oh. He did not. He has to get to the line, and the foot is short of the line. He went way too high on that one. Way too high. He's a big guy, and he needed to get lower like a Tom Brady. Brady does it as well as anybody I've seen, finding the little cr uh, crease here. I mean, this ball was almost touching the line. See how tall he is on that one? Oh, are they going to go for him on the 30-yard line? Look at this. Fourth and inches, 38-24. They've gone for it twice in this ball game and got uh, one of them, but that was inside Florida territory. Converted to fourth and nine. Here's the handoff right side. Lock got it. Young man, as we mentioned, from Hugo, Oklahoma, just north of the Texas-Oklahoma border. A year ago this time, he was running for the Hugo Buffaloes. It, it really was really, you know, look at the score here, 14 points down, fourth quarter. You really have no choice. You got to go for it. Unless it's fourth and long, I suspect Brooks will go for it in, on every fourth and short. On first down and 10 now, Woodson hands it off. Lock! Big hole! And he's out to the 50-yard line. Joiner and Major Wright combined to make the tackle. That's Same eight of 18. trap play they ran before. You just cash it inside. You're going to get a trap play. Run right off. I guess it was Leaguer that time that made the block, number 66. But either way, they popped it against an attacking defensive line. Sophomore Alfonso Smith is the running back now as Locke gets a break. Play fake. Looks him from behind. Holding is going to be the call as Derek Harvey was taken down and Cunningham got there to sack Andre Woodson. Cunningham had such a huge game against LSU and this time he comes right around, gets held, and still makes the sack. Gary Williams over here, top left tackle is going to be the one that gets matched up. Watch Cunningham explode, does a rip through, and you know that's where you kind of wonder. Holding, holding will that ball? Number 79, offense. A penalty is declined. Second down. You, that's where you, when when Andre reaches that ball back, that's when a player coming from the backside can cause that fumble. That was close that time. Holding call on Gary Williams, fifth sack in this ball game. And again, the pressure, the screen pass right side is caught by Alfonso Smith, but he uh, only gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Boy, it's almost like clockwork. Get a sack, throw a screen. They did it again. They did it earlier, and here comes the screen. Woodson over 300 yards for the game. He said his career began to turn around when Randy Sanders, the former offensive coordinator at Tennessee, was named his quarterback coach. Fourth coach he had in three years. Lock is back in. Third and ten. Pressure comes from Gary Carvey. He's got him six sacks. As well, I mean, this is kind of a surprise, right. Gary. Well, what's happening was a very long yardage again, and you get those guys teeing off up front. LSU really not where it was not able to tee off like this. Cunningham wraps way around on this play. Look at this great stunt. Cunningham starts here. Watch him wrap around and come up. No chance to handle that. Cunningham fast enough to line, line up outside and then come inside to make the sack. That brings on Tim Maste with 8.20 to go. The punt. Hangs up. 
Brandon James will let it bounce. It does take a Kentucky roll and is out of bounds at the 13 yard line. Make it the 12. 8 10 to go in this one. It's 38 24. Percy Harvin scampered 24 yards for the latest touchdown. Beautiful time of the year in a beautiful city. Lexington, Kentucky, 38-24 with 8-10 to go in the ball game. And Tim Tebow leads his ball club back on the field. And he's doing it all. We saw that he was 66%, 67% of the offense. Today, his runs and passes, 73% of the offense, 40 plays. It's one thing if he was passing all the time. He's running and passing an amazing statistic. First down and 10. Tebow hands it off up the middle. It goes to Percy Harvin. And Harvin driven back. Well, Tim Tebow is just a sophomore, but very much in the mix in a Heisman conversation. Well, here's the quarterbacks that you have to look at first. Brendan Dixon, Harold Ryan, Tebow, and Woodson. I think the winner of this game, obviously, one of the guys is out of it. But there's some other guys. The running guys get a shot. Everybody's talking heart. I think Dorsey's going to have trouble now. McFadden needs a huge game. But Rice helped himself Thursday night. He's still in it. Second down and 12. Here's Tebow again. And he's cut down at the 11-yard line by Braxton Kelly, middle linebacker number 56. Last time out, Tebow was having his right shoulder massage. Now watch where he takes this hit right on the right shoulder and he went down now it might not be this game but remember there's more games to come and when he's that much of the offense can he take it third and ten Right across the middle, Caldwell can't hang on. He's popped by Marcus McClinton about the time the ball got there. It'll be fourth down. Caldwell, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. He's putting his mouthpiece in when he runs off the route, and he's lucky he had the mouthpiece in. I don't know what he was doing. Coming out, I, I had my eye on him going, what is going on here? He was coming off adjusting his helmet or mouthpiece or something. Still a football game. Chaz Henry is on to punt. Demario Ford awaits the punt. Henry booms this one. That's uh, well done. Good downfield coverage. Ford, though, with a slight chance to return it. Tony Joyner makes the tackle at the 44-yard line. 50-yard punt. Six on the return. 6.34 to go. 14-point difference. All right, Tim, and of course, those of us who reside in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, <laughs> are Rockies fans, and we're just waiting. Well, no, I played for the Browns, so, okay. you know, I'm an Indian, half Indian, I don't know, I don't watch okay. <laughs> Well, tonight, without a trace, followed by CSI Miami and 48 Hours Mystery, a new edition, that's the lineup tonight. Kentucky now must pick up the pace. They should go to a, a hurried up, not speedy, but a hurried up offense. Woodson back under pressure again. Screen pass. Locke has it seen. Puts his head down. Fights the yardage. Gets out of bounds and gives this crowd a spark. Well, remember the last series ended with a sack, right? What's the play call, Vern? Screen. Yeah. It's, how hard is this, you know? It's like the guys I play golf with. Every time they chip one, they want a chip. Next time they get in that situation on the fringe, they putt it. <laughs> <laughs> right, you've seen that before, right? The 24 Texas yards. wedge. Yeah, you bet. On first down, Woodson. Got it, Tammy. The tight end is to the 11-yard line. Uh-uh, holding. Bring it back. Rich Brooks is 10 yards out on the field. I was going to say that Woodson had a lot of time to throw this one. Holding, holding, holding number 79. Offense, 10-yard penalty. 
replay first down. Well, Gary Williams has had uh, had yep. a tough afternoon. It's uh, this time again in boy. I don't I don't know if this one this one. I'm not sure if it was on Gary Williams 79 or not. That call is out here. Let's watch this inside move. Oh I don't like that call that I don't like that call at all. That's a tough one. Wipes out a huge gain. Here's a screen pass. This is Alfonso Smith in the 29. So they get uh, 13 of it back. Well, they, they need to hurry up and get to the line of scrimmage. Now you got to think of the next. You need two scores. You got to think of the next drive. You want to save all your timeouts. Timeouts in college football are more valuable on defense than on offense. Snap is back. Four man rush. Deep left side. Steve Johnson comes inside and then gets to the 25 yard line. It's going to bring up a third down. Five and a half to go. Clock running. Kentucky has all three timeouts remaining. Florida has used one. Jacob Tammy had the limp out of the game. He's really struggling with a turf toe. Demario Ford after the left side that does allow them to move the chain and it stops the clock as he goes out of bounds at the 23. See I have no problem with you taking your time on third down and sh you got to make the first down you can't hurry up and give yourself fourth down it was a very strategic and good use of the clock there. Now Tammy who was described as gimpy by his coaches yesterday is back on the field. And Derek Locke, the freshman from Hugo, Oklahoma, is the running back. Keenan Burton has been quiet, number 19. Woodson, nobody there. Now he finally lobs it out left side in the general direction of Steve Johnson, second and 10. Well, earlier today, South Carolina upset at home by Vanderbilt. Georgia has the week off. They take on Florida next week. Tennessee losers today. They were thumped by Alabama. Vandy at two and three. So uh, this one has some meaning. Here's the handoff to Locke straight up the middle. Protecting the ball. He gets down to the 14 yard line. What a find huh. I mean you got a guy walks in here brings his highlight tape with him when he comes here on a track opportunity and he's come through there. Kentucky would not be where they are without him. On third down. Hand off to Locke. He darts to the left, cuts inside, gets to the 11. That's going to move the chain. First down and 10. Now's the time to get up there and get ready for a play. Call one of your favorite plays. It's first down, clock is stopped. Hurry up. You should not waste more than five or six seconds to snap this ball. Beautifully done by Kentucky. On first down. Burton and Lyons are right side. The handoff up the middle. Lock. Down to the five. Derek Harvey makes the tackle. 4.09 to go. Yeah, this is Tammy territory, and there's no Tammy out there, is there? Is no. he out there? No, not he's right not. Now. This is Woodson checking off. He did not look over to the bench. Drills it right side, inside. Incomplete. Intended for Keenan Burton. Wandy Pierre-Louis was defending. Slant pass, matchup you want. Your go-to receiver, player off. This should be completed. Ball was way behind. You're not going to get that call. That was ball was poorly thrown. I don't know if it was tipped or not, but you're not going to get that call. That should have been a touchdown. It's third down and five. With 345 to go. Lions and Burton to the right. Johnson to the left. Woodson. Into the end zone deep. Incomplete. Tony Joyner defending on this one. And finally, will Florida get a fourth down stop? 
They have not do it. Now remember, there is no face guarding in college football. Tony Joyner's not looking for the ball from behind and hits him right in the back. Number 19, that is not a penalty. I, I couldn't see if there was a hand on Burton before the ball hit Joyner. And we might like to go back one more time to look at that to see if someone else grabbed Burton before the ball hit Joyner. Well, that was Marky Anderson, number yeah, 14. Yeah, let's see right there. No, it's, that looks clean. Both players jostling. You can't make that call. And when... When the push comes, the ball hits Joyner in the back. NFL, that's an easy call. College, a great play. Sun setting here in Lexington, Kentucky. Time running out on the Wildcats, 38-24. Rich Brooks' team has a fourth down and five. Steve Johnson has been his money guy in these situations. Woodson looks the other direction into the end zone. That's caught, and that is a touchdown. Dickie Lyons again. Thirty-eight, thirty. Lions with eight catches for 124 yards. Looking at the coverage, you can see why Andre Ware threw to the, excuse me, Andre Woodson threw to the right. It was double coverage that time on Steve Johnson. He had, he made the proper read. He used his eyes. It's going to be reviewed. But remember, there was an opportunity for Kentucky to get a first down on the play. It's either a first down or a touchdown. And the question is, you know, the proverbial breaking of the plane. Yes. Perfect guy to go to. He got the guy one-on-one -on, -one on Tony Joyner. Referee standing right on the line on that play. Joyner got that late. Gets one foot over the line. Gets his feet into the end zone. Turns around, catches the ball. That's an easy touchdown. The ball and Dickey Lines both break the plane. We don't... One more look. Well, that's pretty clear. Now, 335, Kentucky, two timeouts remaining. Now, the review continues. Dickey Lyons, Jr. And the play under review. James Allison, the replay official. Thomas Ritter. And here is the announcement of the decision. Bet it stands. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. So Lonis Sieber is on. Lions gets his third touchdown catch of the day. The country clubber has showed up today, hasn't he? Yeah, no uh, swimming, soccer, or golf today. Here's the extra point. It's good. And it's a seven-point game with 3.35 to go. Double coverage to the top on Johnson, so you play three on two on the bottom. See, three guys right there, so they go three on two. They bracket the outside guy, Burton. You go to the inside guy. What a job Woodson did. He knew Johnson was double covered. He knew one of the two guys to the other side would be single covered. He went to the one guy with one guy on him. And so the Wildcats have clawed themselves back. They trail by seven. Kentucky trails by seven, 335 to go. In the SEC, Georgia got a successful one against Ole Miss. They'll pooch this one, and Brandon James picks it up on one hop. Out to the 43-yard line. Well, we talked about in the open that these two guys do different things, but they're both winners, and they're both the guy that kind of spearheads this offense. Look at the yards that they've produced in this game. Both of them, both of them with four touchdown passes and without an interception or a turnover. How about that? 
Well, the difference comes in running yardage, of course, and with six sacks today, and uh, in college football, that that yardage comes off the running game. Woodson, uh, eight for minus 38. First down and 10. Tebow pulls it back and throws it out after he faked to Keystone Moore. He finds Keystone Moore across the 50 to the 47-yard line. How about that call, by the way? We thought it was going to be another one of these Tebow attack guys right here. That's how he's ran the ball. Most of it inside the tough yards, inside the tackle right and left, a couple of them to the outside, but Tebow has earned every yard and carry today. How about that call? I first thought that, that. That's, I know that is a Dan Mullen call saying I don't want to give the ball. There's Dan in the middle not sipping the coffee or the guy not spitting out a little chew. One of the two. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm not exactly sure. That'll be short. Let's go down to Tracy for an update on Tim Tebow. Gary, as you mentioned, trainers were looking at Tim Tebow's shoulder. They told me he's fine. They gave him some pills for the pain. But, guys, I have to tell you, from watching him on the sidelines running up and down, it looks as though it may be his back, his legs. He keeps stretching it. Not surprising with the beating he takes out there. Second down and a foot. I thought he was favoring his right arm running out there. He was moving his left arm, but he was holding his right arm still. I, I think if they run the ball with Tebow again, they will run it to the right so he can take hits. Well, that's his pass that's, shoulder. Yeah. See, that's the problem here. He, I'll tell you, the last big run he made when he got hit for the first time I've ever seen him, he winced. First time I've ever seen a wince from him. Well, the Florida Gators today have run the ball 26 times. This guy has run it 18 of the 26. The running back has not run the ball once. Here's Tebow with a delay. How about that little bit of he, trickeration? I think he thought the play was called dead. I, I, I honestly, I do. I don't think he knew. And by the way, they did run that ball to the right so he didn't get popped. A cumulative effect on Tebow today. He's earned every yard. The physical pounding. There's one on a scramble. This is the one right there where he winced when he went down, and he's been holding that right arm steady ever since that. Kentucky has two timeouts remaining. It's 2.20 to go in this one at a seven-point game. We have not had a turnover in the ball game. There's Keiston Moore's first carry of the day. How to call? Yes. I'm sorry. Got to call timeout now, Vern. And they do. You can't wait because you got to hope maybe on third and long, Florida will try to throw a pass and stop the clock with an incomplete pass. That's your only shot. Time called. 2:06 to go. Now time for the Ruby Tuesday Player of the Game. Tim Tebow, 17 of 25, throwing it, four touchdowns. He's run it 19 times for a total of 76 yards, second down here. He's going to run the ball here, I'll tell you that. Oh, how wow. about that? Wow. And they go for the home run. Wow. Caught. How about that? Percy Harvin at the two-yard line. If he does not complete that ball, the clock stops, and the last time out, you talk about a coach that believes in his quarterback. The play action pass again from the spread. There's not a guy on this Kentucky team that thought they were going to get a bomb on this play. Deep ball when the game is on the line. Holy cow. And so a 40 yard pass to Harvin. First and goal. Tebow. Touchdown for the tenth time this year on the ground. Tim Tebow, that's his mom Pam to the left, his dad Bob. 
kind of pride do you think they have? Uh, what a game from a football player today, huh? What a game from that football player today. I give it the credit to all the whole Florida team. I mean, they'd answer. Their offense has been unstoppable. But those two calls from the Florida offense, first down pass and that second down pass, are amazing calls. Joey Eos knocks it home. It's 45-31. Tebow has now rushed for 10 touchdowns this season. And look at Urban Meyer in the background. Seventy-one thousand gathered here at Commonwealth today, and they've seen a, a quarterback contrast: Tim Tebow and Andre Woodson. And uh, it appears Tim Tebow is going to come out on top, but Dickie Lyons might uh, have something to say about that. He's all the way out to the forty-two-yard line. Tim Tebow <laughs> is I've watched a lot of football. I thought I saw it all when I saw Vince Young play. He was so unique in what he brought to the field. I never I mean I've never really I thought I, I I gotta be honest with you, I thought I saw it all when I saw Michael Vick play years ago. Then I saw it with Vince Young. Now I'm seeing it with Tim Tebow. It's uh when a guy controls a game like this, it is something to watch. Here's Woodson under pressure. Flips a little pass out to Derek Rock. He comes right and uh Gets out to the 50-yard line. You now the Wildcats of Kentucky suffered through some miserable years. Uh, turned this thing around last year after they lost to LSU. Wound up eight and five. They go into the Music City Bowl. They are bowl eligible again, having won six already. Here's uh, Jacob Tammy, the tight end, and he's able to get out of bounds and stop the clock. And in a strange way, because Kentucky came back and played well in this game, and people watch this game, it's going to help Florida strength the schedule. Because they're going to say, you know, if they blow out Kentucky, people say, well, it was just one of those things with LSU. Kentucky's not a great team. But now they line up and play Florida strong. This is going to give more credence to Florida being one of the top 10 teams in the country still. Second down and seven. Lock is in. Woodson up, oh, goes deep. Nice catch inside the 30 at the 26 yard line. Steve Johnson, 57 seconds to go. Lock stops while they move the chain. The only chance, ironically, that Kentucky had a chance of getting back in the game was a touchdown by Florida because if they'd have taken a knee, the game would have been over at seven. Here's Woodson, play fake, hands it off. It's not a fake, and Lock. That's his 14th carry this evening. Dustin Doe makes the tackle. Well, Florida gotta will. Got to take a time out yep. here, don't you? Oh, they got a, an injured player for. No, they did call a timeout. The clock is at 30 seconds and uh, 36 seconds. Well, it's time now for our Wrangler five-star play of the game. The call, Nick Huber of the Florida Gator Radio Network. Second and goal. Tebow in the gun, takes the snap, wants to run. Now jump pass into the end zone, wide open. It's a touchdown. Aaron Hernandez, the recipient of Tebow's jump pass in the end zone, and the Gators lead 20 to 10. That jump pass just before the halftime and my partner Nostradamus <laughs> called it well let's just go back I mean it, it's the game is not over it probably is over but there's life if Florida after the long pass down to the one just takes a knee three straight times the game is over for sure they hit a pass onside kick you never know we know we've seen crazy things in the stadium a few years ago right bluegrass miracle yep but Kentucky has played a decent football game. They are a legitimate contender to be anyone in the country. Wildcats with a second down. Woodson incomplete intended for Lott. Clock stops at 35. Uh, Rich Brooks, 66 years of age. Mitch Barnhart elected to uh, keep his services in the face of mounting criticism a year ago and 
lost opportunity today, yeah. apparently. I think there's a lot of coaches in college football that are doing that. Oh, my gosh, one play here, one play there. It could have been any way. They could have been still in this thing. On third down, the pass is complete to the tight end, Jacob Tammy. Got to get up there and ground it now. Just throw it into the ground. Stop that clock. You don't even need a call here. Offense is set. Ball is marked ready for play, and they'll leave it into the end zone. Right side over the head of Dickie Lyons Jr. It'll be second down. In his career, Urban Meyer has never coached teams that have lost three in a row. Only once in his career has an Urban Meyer coach team lost back to back. Twice now. Happened this year with the loss to Auburn and the LSU. It happened previously in 2002 at Bowling Green. Second down. Keenan Burton to the five. Can't stop the clock. They'll hustle and try and get one more play. What a great game played again by both of these football teams. Third and two. Woodson still looking. Touchdown, Kentucky. Keenan Burton, the senior who grew up in Louisville. And the game is over. You got to kick the extra point, don't you? This is regulation play. Surprise. Great play. Great player. Still looks to me like he's holding his right arm to me a little bit. Tim Tebow for the day, 18 of 26 for 256 yards and four touchdowns. Florida wins it. We'll see you next week. Georgia, Florida, in Jacksonville. Good night, everybody.